Good evening and welcome to the second annual Daytona 500. My name is Daryl Morley. Alongside me is Tim Terry. And Tim, 10 years and one year ago today, we lost one of the greatest from the sport that we love so much. And tonight, as a part of our racing action, we will also celebrate the life of the greatest ever. Indeed, you're right, Daryl, and a lot of fantastic stuff that has gone on in those uh, 10 years, a, a lot of upgrades, a lot of new things coming in, and of course, you see the Daytona International Speedway, a simulated version that we are seeing this afternoon or this evening now. It, it's, it's just awesome how far we've come in the last 10 years. Indeed, these drivers have been working all week long to get to the point they are at right now. We are seeing the best of the best, the top 40 that have attempted to qualify for the simulated Daytona 500. Of course, the traditional Daytona 500 hits the airwaves tomorrow on regular television. Tonight, we get our own simulated preview here on PSR TV, and there are several splits taking place at the exact same time. We will be watching the top split, the fastest of the fast here tonight. And there's a lot of familiar names to sim racers. Of course, they qualified their way in from the past week. And these are the top 40 times that could make it. And we are seeing them live here this evening. And guys like John Costa, John Adams, Thomas Lewandowski. The list goes on and on. And you'll see these top 40 drivers go at it for 200 laps of racing around Daytona this evening. And 200 laps is a long, long race. And one of the things these drivers have to worry about that the drivers on Sunday don't have to worry about is their tires. This is the pre-new pavement Daytona International Speedway. This is the old pavement, so to speak. So it's bumpy. It's rough. It'll chew up your tires, and you really have to be careful out there. And you really have to have a good setup underneath your race car, Daryl. These guys have practiced all week long to get to this point, so I'm sure these drivers have a stable setup underneath them. But you mentioned those bumps around this racetrack. You want to have something that handles those bumps without sliding up the racetrack. If you're going two and three wide, that's the last thing you want to do is hit one of those bumps and porpoise your way up the track into oncoming traffic. We're going to see if we can hook up Booth to Car Communications with one of our in-race reporters, John Costa. This is Daryl with PSR TV. You got me, buddy? I got you loud and clear. John, you're going to roll off from inside of row number two. What's the strategy looking like for this 200 lapper? Uh, pretty much the strategy is probably going to be just to try to run around. Uh, this is a long race, so I'll try to make up my spots early just on the pit stops probably. And... Uh, just try to get them at the end, really. Just just going to ride around for a few. What point is go time? At what point do you decide, okay, it's time to flip that switch and go from ride around mode to balls out mode? Uh, it just depends how the race is going to shake out. Uh, probably somewhere around the last or, or second to last pit stop, probably. How far are you looking between pit stops? How far can you go on fuel and is tires an issue? Uh, probably tire isn't tires aren't really an issue too much uh, unless we go for a long long run um, I probably for the first stop at least I'm gonna try to stay out as long as possible uh, try to avoid some of the early wrecks probably the same thing I did last year all right buddy before we let you go let's hear about those sponsors friends teammates who helped you get into the show um, well, I guess I just got to thank uh, Jameson, Spees, and, you know, Jesse Atchison, Jay Lo Jason Loping. I mean, they, they helped me out, too, with the setup here. We put in a lot of time for the setup, and uh, I, I, I got to also thank the sponsor on the car, which is uh, GoJoeyLagano.com. There you go. That's John Costa. He'll roll off from inside of row number two. And, Tim, he seems very, very relaxed for a guy that's about to be in the heat of the battle in less than two minutes. Indeed, you're right, Daryl. The good thing for him, though, is he's going to start in that third-place position once we get going. Might be a little bit easier to be up in that third place, up near the front of the field. Let's say you're Chad Coleman or, or Pedro Souza back there, starting about mid-pack. You'd have a little bit more nerves as we get ready to start this 200-lap race. Just a little bit over one minute to go until this final practice is over, and these drivers were given an additional practice, try to get 
get their setups tweaked a little bit, perhaps get some time out there running with the drivers in the split that they're going to find themselves in. Arthur Lucas was our quickest qualifier. He clocked in, get this, Tim, at a 47.097. James Curtis outside of him, a 47.098. We're talking the less than the blink of an eye between first and second place. In fact, a fraction of a blink of an eye. And all these 40 drivers that you see here on the racetrack are all within two-tenths of a second of each other when it comes to the qualifying session. So in order to get into this top split race, you had to have a lightning quick lap around the Daytona International Speedway. As you, these guys quickly wrap up the warm-up session, it looks like car number eight of Ian Smythe is on top of the list with a 46.665. Parker Hammond's in second place. So these guys are getting it done in the draft as well as on the racetrack for qualifying. Tim, I know our viewers are looking forward to seeing some great left-turning action here at Daytona, but what if they want to see some left and right-turning action? What's the, what's the best time to catch that here on PSR TV? They can come back in one week's time, Daryl, 5 p.m. Eastern time. The Drivers World Championship Road Racing Series kicks off their 2011 campaign at Circuit Spa Francorchamps. It's the best road drivers on iRacing going at it for their 18 race schedule, and it starts next week here on PSR TV, 5 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. There you go. Make sure you tune in for that one. That should be a lot of fun. I know I'll be tuning in to watch it just to get a glimpse of Spa. It's one of the tracks that I do not currently have here within the iRacing service, and I'm still working at becoming one of the 100% content club members. It's going to take me a little bit to get there, but I have faith I will get there at some point. Although you never know, iRacing continues to add more content, Tim. Indeed they do, and Spa Frank or Champ, definitely an awesome racing track. And if you don't have it, you'll want to be here next week on PSR TV. And it looks like these guys, final couple of cars being called to the grid. We're getting ready to see some awesome left-hand turn racing. Rolling off from pit road, getting set to go racing here. We're going to let you know who qualified where. Qualifying on the pole, the number 15 of Arthur Lucas. Outside of row number one is James Curtis. And you, have, I don't see either of those drivers here on the front row. They might be starting from pit road, Daryl. Row number two sees the 12 car, John Costa, who we talked to in the pre-race show. And on the outside, it's going to be Howard LeBon in the 13. Joe Holt scheduled to be inside of row number three and outside row three, which is now row two was scheduled to have been John Adams. Anderson Pays in the 21, scheduled to start in a 7th place, and scheduled to start in 8th place, the number 1, a Thomas Lewandowski. Eugene Mosgana was scheduled to start ninth and scheduled to start 10th, Dylan Sharman. Next up on the list is the 35 of Jim Orlando and the 28 of Joel Edrick, and a start scheduled to start at least in 12th. 13th qualifier, Matthias Jatoit, and outside of him, Ian D. Smythe. Familiar name in the iRacing simulation is Chad Coleman in the number 9, and next up on the list is Chris Moss in the number 19. Joshua Christman was scheduled to start 17th and 18th, Pedro Sousa. Driving 33 is William Halliburton, and your next position, 25, Dave Langman. One of my favorite drivers, Mitchell Hunt, will start 21st or qualify 21st and qualifying 22nd, Chris Overland. Brian Mackling going to roll the 20 car off from at 23rd place or better. Yanni Pentonen going to roll off the 3 in the outside row. Qualified 13th row, Steve Wright and James Wallace. Alexei Loma and Chris Templin make up your next row. Followed by Sean White and the one and only Landon Harrison. We'll get to the rest of the drivers in just a little bit. For now, let's go Green Flag Racing. The 2011 second annual iRacing Daytona 500 is underway. And a great start for John Acosta in the number 12 car. He pulls out as a couple of drivers now. Daryl pulling off a pit road. At least three of them going to join this train. I believe that our lead drivers, Arthur Lucas, James Curtis, and possibly even John Adams, 
although John Adams is showing on the racetrack in the number six in third spot. Howard LeBlanc is also there, Daryl. He was scheduled to start in four, so those guys will hope for a caution flag here quickly to get back up with this field. Meanwhile, up in front, it is John Costa and Joe Holt, your top two. Costa leads, Holt sits in second spot in the number 11 car. Right behind them, we find the number six, I do believe. Yes, that is John Adams. That's your inside row. Here comes the outside row, the number one of Thomas Lewandowski getting a push. Lewandowski trying to make that outside line work, but there's a lot of guys down low. There are only four drivers up high. Everybody else in this lead draft, at least at the front, seems to be down low. Now here comes Joel Holt looking on the outside. Not going to happen through two. Holt thought about jumping out to the outside as the outside line was starting to catch up to them. Holt now drops back in behind Jean Costa. Costa is your race leader, followed by Holt. Then it's Adam side by side with Lewandowski. You mentioned in the pre-race, there are lots of time to ride around this Daytona International Speedway. Get to lap 160, get to lap 150, and then battle it out for the win. You have to get to the end in order to have the opportunity to win this race. Your top three show on the low line, Costa, Holt, and Adams. They'll enter turn number one up onto the banking here at Daytona International Speedway. Still, your top three remains the way it is as this high line tries to form up. They're trying to form up a nice strong high line and I don't know how successful they're going to be here in the early going but you've got to give them credit Tim. At least they're trying. Indeed they are Daryl. Got to try it early to make sure that it will work once we come down to lap 198 199 down to the end of this race. Joe Holt seems to be popping that nose out every lap or so on the outside line looking for that high line possibly to get up to them but not going to happen as they come across to complete lap three you can see just how rough this racetrack is as these cars bouncing all over this racetrack it's the old configuration pre-paving or pre-repaving we should say of daytona international speedway and these drivers doing a masterful job controlling their cars a lot of us myself included have a hard time making a lap here you ride on board with the number five on the outside line. He's about to be three wide back there. That's Mosganoff, and he was almost three wide. Daryl is the driver right behind him trying to make it three wide. I don't think that's a wise move this early. I don't think it's a wise, wise move this early, but it is a pretty darn exciting one, if I do say so myself, and we always like to see him three wide here at Daytona. When they go three wide, it's no longer Daytona. It's close your eyes and pray, Tona. Up on the high side, John Adams popped out in that number six car, but it looks like he's going to lose position at number three to the 21 car of Anderson Pays as he goes down low looking for the position. John Adams up high in the X-Lander Designs machine looking to possibly take away the lead. The high line, though, going to fall back to position number four. A lot of drivers that have qualified for this particular event, whether it be this split or other splits, running special uh, tribute schemes to the one and only Dale Earnhardt Sr. Of course, seen if, if you're a racing fan, you know what this weekend marks. It's the 10th anniversary of the day we lost one of the greatest ever to put a steering wheel between his hands. And a lot of these drivers, both in this split and in all of the other splits combined, are running special tribute schemes for the one and only Dale Earnhardt. These guys work down into corners number one until you look at Joe Holt in that number 11 car. This isn't just the Daytona scheme that he runs. Joe Holt runs this scheme uh, throughout all his races on iRacing. I know his truck looks strikingly similar to this cup car that he is running right now. So the number 11 of Joe Holt, one of those drivers that's showing the, the Earnhardt colors. Another driver showing somewhat Earnhardt colors, the number one machine. That's Thomas Lewandowski, the old school Earnhardt colors, the blue and yellow Wrangler colors on the number one of Thomas Lewandowski beautifully redone and the last time a Wrangler car won here at Daytona it was the number three and it was the younger of the Earnhardt Dale Earnhardt Jr. that took home the win last year in the July race with it and they're taking a look on that outside line now Darrell looks like the low line has kind of fizzled a little bit those guys in the high line tucked up tight together and now John Adams up to second place Joe Holt on the inside they go side by side and Adams will get a run down this back straightaway to possibly pull up to John Costa.
First and second place have identical fast laps here as it's 47 point, I believe 201 at this racetrack, which is pretty darn quick. John Adams, a tick faster, 47.134. Adams getting that great push from Thomas Lewandowski. And the five behind them, Amazgonov pushing them. It looks like we have about an even amount of cars in the high line as we do on the low side in this lead drop, but it continues to be Jean Costa leading this field around with Joe Holt in second place. Those two drivers, I don't think, have left the two positions there for a, a fair while on that low side. John Adams trying to pull that high line up to first. I find it very interesting, the strategy that these drivers, Arthur Lucas, James Curtis, Howard LeBon, and James Wallace, uh, have attempted to pull off. Wallace has lost that second drafting group between Lucas, Curtis, and LeBon. Wallace, 24 seconds behind your race leader. Lucas, Curtis, and LeBon, a little over 11 seconds behind the leader. And that's one thing you don't want to do, especially once, once this race up here is getting clean and green. If we get up to a green flag pit stop, Daryl, those guys could be very well behind the eight ball, and they could stand to lose a lap or more, and it could make for a very long evening. If you're one lap down, you're looking at about lap 50 or so with 150 to go. All 40 cars still running and all 40 cars on the lead lap as 40 drivers took the green flag. Three or four of them took it from the pit area and they did it voluntarily, at least to the best of our knowledge, voluntarily, uh, which, you know, strategy plays out. It might be the best place to start. At least you're safe in the pits. And we keep talking about the big one that happens, the big wreck. If something were to happen up in front of this field, more than likely everybody behind would be involved or at least scrambling to not get involved in the wreck. So it might be a smart idea on those drivers that started in the pit area to try to avoid something like that. And that would explain the 12-second gap between themselves and the leader. Give yourself plenty of time to make an adjustment should something happen on the racetrack. Now, if nothing happens on the racetrack, you have rolled the dice and you've come up snake eyes and that strategy, that, that gamble will not pay off. If something happens, you can avoid it. Maybe a whole bunch of other people are not so lucky. A lot of other people get involved in these things and it usually happens around the middle to the front portion of these packs that something all breaks loose and all hell hits the fan. Looking at the second pack right now, trying to catch the main pack. That's Chris Overland, Landon Harrison, Kevin Bradshaw, the likes back there. I do believe that is. Landon Harrison's one of those names that we haven't talked about. Daryl possibly could be a sleeper to get into this event. He was one of the, the lower qualified drivers in this race. I believe he started back around the 30th position. He started deep in the field, but that's not indicative of what Landon Harrison is capable of doing. He had... Uh, he is, he's always got a solid race set up. He's not been known for his top-notch qualifying skills. He can get the job done, and he'll grab a few pole positions from time to time. But Landon Harrison really excels in traffic. He's one of those guys that just masters working in traffic, whether it's at a short track, on a road course, or on a big track like Daytona. Landon Harrison knows how to work traffic. And he is the last driver in line right now in this lead draft. We have 25 drivers in this lead draft, all separated by about 1.8 seconds. So if something happens up in front, more than likely Landon Harrison is going to hear about it and going to see it and going to see it in a hurry as they go down the back straightaway into corner number three. We are working lap number 12 so far and no incidents to report. So far, clean and green, 11 laps completed the scheduled 200 lap distance. And again, these drivers, Tim, just trying to settle in, trying to turn a few laps, get this race under some sort of a flow, try to figure out exactly what their car is doing, how it responds to other cars around them, how it responds to these specific cars that are around them as well. And that could very well pay off once we get to the last 10 laps of this race. Take John Adams, for instance. He was on the low side of this racetrack for the starting laps of this race. Wasn't going anywhere. Figured, okay, I'll pop out to the outside. He saw Thomas Lewandowski coming. Got the train up high. And he really hasn't lost that third place position. He hasn't lost what he had on that low line. So, so far, the gamble hasn't really paid off, per se, for John Adams. As you look back to Thomas Lewandowski. But it hasn't failed either. 
Now it's been one of those, it, I guess you'd call it a push, but now a little bit more forward progress made by that high line. John Adams not quite yet up into second position, but drawing even with the 11 machine of Joe Holt. And the other benefit is John Adams is getting a whole lot of air in the front of that car, and race cars love clean air. Indeed they do, Daryl, as these guys go down the back straightaway. One thing you don't want to have is overheat the race car, especially if you are at the front of this pack and something big could very well happen as we go down into corner number 314, laps completed. couple of drivers starting to mix it up just a little bit here at Daytona. The number 35 of Jim Orlando involved in that little bit dicey moves as Orlando tries to peek to the high side. They're thinking about making it three wide here, Tim. Thinking about making it three wide, but so far they have backed off of that three wide ordeal at this point as they work through corner number two. They'll head down the back straightaway, and these guys, kind of a close call there. You mentioned going three wide and almost having an incident as you ride on the roof with the number 35 car, Jim Orlando, down the back straightaway. He's looking to get that low line up there and possibly put himself in a top five position here in the next couple of laps. As he tries to catch up with Anderson Pace in the number 21, I believe it's Pace in the number 21. Anderson doing a good job, third on that inside line, trying to find himself drawing even with the number six of John Adams as some difficulty in hooking up between Thomas Lewandowski and Eugene Mosganov. A lot of great racing up at the front of this pack. You mentioned Mosganov up high, pushing Thomas Lewandowski on that high side. Orlando and the likes down low. Chad Coleman is moving up through the pack. What about that number seven of Parker Hammonds? Hammonds is one of those drivers that started in the back of the field. He started 31st, and he's all the way up into the top ten. starting to wonder if Mosganov is starting to overheat just a little bit. I see him very frequently poking that nose into the inside and then to the outside again. Do you think maybe he's got a temperature problem going on in the five? He might very well have some sort of a problem at this point on lap number 17. It's one thing you really don't want to have, especially this early in the race. You look at motor failures, you look at overheating problems, maybe around lap 150 we might see an engine expire or two, but right now, running early in the race, that's one thing you really don't want to have, especially on lap number 17. Yeah, very early to be having temperature issues. That might be why he's dropping back and trying to peek that nose out. No temperature problems for John Costa, however. He continues to lead this race. Led it since the drop of the initial green flag. I wouldn't predict a flag-to-flag -flag win for John Costa, but if anybody can pull it off, well, he's the only one right now. Very well good as John Costa has led this race since the drop of the green flag, but there's a lot of hungry competition behind him. This lead draft, as we mentioned, is up to 25 race cars, and any one of the 25 at this point could very well win, but we're coming up, I do believe, Daryl, on green flag pet stops. I believe we're about halfway through a run, which could very well throw a monkey wrench into the plans for some of these guys up front. Adams shuffled to the high side, three wide as John Adams gets shuffled to the back of the pack in the Simboot sponsored ride. Adams looking like he might need a little bit more cover as he usually drives a, uh, a camouflage painted up car. This one stands out just a little bit more than the usual camo does, Tim. Indeed it does as he goes to the back of this or this top line it was five cars it still is five cars only the six is at the back instead of the front which will put him just outside the top 10 I do believe right behind Parker Hammonds as now Thomas Lewandowski tries to bring that train up to the front of the field front of the field starting to get a little bit more dicey more slicey as here comes Thomas Lewandowski on the high side he's getting a much better push from the number five of Eugene Mosganov. Mosganov all over that back bumper, peeks the nose out yet again. I think he's got some temperature issues going on, Tim, in the five. 
He might very well have some issues, but he's trying to, to get up there and trying to get Lewandowski to the front of this pack. But right now, they are settling for position number three as Pays down low is battling with Lewandowski up high for position number three down the back straightaway as Costa continues to lead this train around Daytona. Chad Coleman and Matias Yatoit had some contact earlier on in this race. Coleman not too happy about it. Matias said, you know, hey, look, it, it wasn't my fault. Slid up India, maybe got a little bit of contact, but this is life. This is racing. Let's just continue on. Chad Coleman doing the best he can to continue on with this lead pack. Didn't lose a lot of spots. Right now, Coleman showing in the eighth spot. And Coleman started in the 15th place position, so he started mid-pack and still currently mid-pack as you run down the back straightaway, riding on board with the number 21, looking back at that number 35, a Jim Orlando down the back straightaway. The low line seems to be tucked up tight together, and that's what you want to do here, Daryl. Get tucked up tight, get some bump drafting going, and that's how you could possibly win a race here at Daytona. Top three now, run almost side to side. Costa still your leader. Holt has himself in a situation. He cannot go to the high side. Why? Because Lewandowski is already there. And we saw the situation a little earlier with John Adams that he was clear he went up high and Thomas Lewandowski gave him the push. But right now, down the back straightaway where they are, Joel Holt cannot do that. If he gets to about mid-corner and he is clear, the spotter does clear him, he can definitely move up. But right now, I think Joel Holt's pretty content to ride behind John Costa. Right now, second place is a good spot to be, especially when you're on the inside line. Let's not forget, these drivers need to start planning for potential green flag pit stops. Sure, it's not going to happen just quite yet. But we're closing in on when you need to start getting ready, start prepping yourself for that green flag pit stop. And part of that is to be on the inside line. You're not going to get to the pitch from the outside line unless somebody on the inside's going with you. And you want to have a drafting partner when you come down on the pit road, Daryl. You can come down pit road by yourself, but if you come out without a drafting partner, you're going to lose valuable time on the racetrack. And that goes for the same if you make a cut mistake on pit road you come down the crew misses a lug nut you only you take four tires instead of taking no tires and you're going to lose a bunch of time on pit road it could very well mean the difference between winning this race and ended up finishing two or three laps down. indeed it could and it could be the difference between this race going by basically in the blink of an eye or this race seeming like it lasts 10 12 13 hours these drivers will be out here for probably close to four hours Every single one of them will be physically and mentally drained by the end of this Daytona 500, the iRacing.com Daytona 500 at that. But the drivers that are having a rough night, the drivers that wind up a lap down early, well, their night's going to seem a heck of a lot longer. Three wide up here as Parker Hammond splits the middle. I believe that's a 23 car up higher. 29, check that. Back in the fourth place now on the high side. So Parker Hammonds makes up a position. Could this be very well shuffling? Ready for possibly some green flag pit stops in a few laps? I don't know if we're going to see green flag pit stops quite yet. We may see them. I mean, you would know better than I would the, the pit gap here, the pit window at Daytona. I don't have that information in front of me, but we will know very, very soon what that pit window is. I believe these guys can go about 35, 40 laps on the fuel, Daryl, so I don't know if we're going to see any short pitting here. I haven't calculated up to lap 200 yet, but these guys should probably be thinking about pit stops within the next 10 or 12 laps or so to come down and see their crews as we've been green so far. Thomas Lewandowski still trying to take away that third place position. Somewhere between 30 and 40 laps is when we expect to see these drivers start to trickle in for green flag pit stops. Between 30 and 35, I think we'll see the majority of them come down for their green flag pit stops. And there should be plenty of action on pit road very, very soon. It's going to become a very, very busy place. And then immediately after those pit stops are complete, it will once again become a ghost town. 
as you ride on board with the number five there, Eugene Mosganov on the high side. Now down low he goes. That's the first time we've seen the five move down low. Daryl, he's going to leave Lewandowski up high, and now it's Parker Hammonds behind the number one. Thomas Lewandowski's in a good spot. He's got Parker Hammonds all over the back bumper, and Hammonds will give him one heck of a push. Parker Hammonds knows what he's doing here at Daytona, so Hammonds now hooked up with Thomas Lewandowski. That should be quite the formidable drafting pair. But they might need another horse or two up high. They're now back to position at number four as Thomas Lewandowski battles Pays down low for position number four. Hammonds, I believe John Adams is still up on the high line as well. Very strong competition up high as we work lap number 27 down the back straightaway. One of the things I'm noticing is right now the inside line a little bit tighter drafting group than the outside line. Just as we say that, the inside line starts to disintegrate a little bit, and the outside line starts to form a little bit tighter drafting pack. The tighter the pack is, the more progress they're going to make, the faster they're going to be as a group. However, the also the tighter you are, not only will you go faster, but the potential for destruction is higher. Indeed it is, Daryl. You get a very tight draft going. You get a little bump drafting going. If something happens that one of those bump drafts does go wrong, it could be very well paying off for a bunch of these guys out in the back. They could be in the wreck, and they could be, uh, by paying off, meaning uh, the, the virtual checkbooks going off and having to uh, replace a little bit of pride, some safety rating, and maybe even some I rating by the end of this race. One of the stories to watch and follow through with is these drivers' connections and potential issues with their connection. The 35 of Jim Orlando was blinking just a little while ago. Orlando all the way from, get this, Florida. Go figure. Orlando is from Florida having some connection issues. And also drivers in the Northeast may find themselves with some connection issues because there's been some very, very strong windstorms from New York State all the way up through the remainder of the Northeast, and it's put some power out in a lot of places, and it's also slowed down network connections in a lot of places out there, too. Watching a couple of guys up high there getting fairly dicey for position. When you talk about different clubs represented, Daryl, Dylan Sharman representing Australia. We have a couple of Central Eastern, Eastern Europe clubs being represented, Eugene Mosganoff in the five, being one of those drivers up in front. We have a couple of France drivers in the field, drivers from Brazil. The Benelou Club is represented. I don't see any Canadians out here, so it's uh, one of those uh, things that they're going to have to get up on the wheel for the next Daytona 500 to get up in the top split. We knew we didn't have a Canadian on the track, so we brought one anyways, and we put the Canadian in the booth so we can still, still have a Canadian influence in our broadcast. And I know, Tim, it breaks your heart not to have a Canadian driver out there, and I didn't see any New England drivers anywhere, so don't feel too bad. There are a couple of Finnish drivers in here as well. Alexei Iloma is in the field. Uh, Yanni Pintanen is in the field as well. There's a lot of different clubs being represented here. It's not only a, a U.S. field. It's a global, international fit flavor in this race on the iRacing simulation. If you haven't gone over and checked out iRacing yet, you definitely have to at iRacing.com. By the way, those that go to iRacing.com, you sign up now for a new account. You pay for one month, you get two months for free. So basically, you're going to get three months for the price of one, and you get a whole bunch of content with that as well. And indeed you do, Daryl. It's one thing you don't want to miss, and you could see yourself here in the third annual iRacing Daytona 500, the World Tour events coming up as well. This is the second World Tour event. Of course, the Daytona 2.4 happened earlier in the season as the 29 car nearly goes up and kisses the safer barrier. A 29 struggling a little bit in the corners, not quite sure what's going on, or if he just hit a bump wrong and it shot that car upward towards the outside wall. And You know, I've been out here on the racetrack. I've turned a couple of laps. I've tried to make... Uh, as quick a lap as I could with these cars, the Chevy Impala, and there was just no way. I found myself in the wall more often than not. Let's just say I tested those safer barriers, and they do hold up. Indeed, you're right, Daryl. They're, they're not really 
for the rookie. You get a couple of laps out here, and, and you have to tune on your race car. Uh, I've taken laps in the Chevrolet Silverado here at Daytona, and I know one of our producers, Matt Racing Kid Thomas, uh, can say that I actually did pretty well in, in Daytona until I met the Safer Barrier as well. So these guys out here have tweaked their setups. They spent hours and hours on their race setups to get here to this point to race in the Daytona 500. These drivers enjoying the sights and sounds of the Daytona 500, the iRacing.com. Daytona 500, just a few hours before the green flag drops on the NASCAR Daytona 500. And of course, iRacing, the only simulation software out there that is now officially NASCAR licensed, endorsed, and, uh, and sanctioned was the word I was looking for. The only official online NASCAR sanctioned series all happen here within the iRacing software. And the cool promotion that iRacing put on as well. You mentioned the, the real Daytona 500 happening uh, within 24 hours of this broadcast. These drivers that are racing in here and that are racing in the Daytona 500 through the various splits, if one of the iRacers, one of the real world, real world drivers that does iRacing wins the Daytona 500, every single driver that starts this Daytona 500 gets a $5 iRacing credit. So let's say Joey Logano wins tomorrow, Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins tomorrow, that's going to uh, that's going to put five extra dollars in these drivers' pockets that did start this event. Yeah, and you know, there, there's a certain iRacing driver that qualified on the pole. Yeah, he'll have to start from the back, but something tells me that this guy knows his way around Daytona. We're talking about the multiple-time Daytona winner, I believe, six times. Uh, he's won in the Nationwide Series, one away from his dad's record. We're talking about Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's one of those drivers that could win you if you started this Daytona 500. In any split, I believe, could win you a $5 iRacing credit. And did very well in the nationwide race, as you mentioned earlier this afternoon, Daryl. So if he wins, uh, Steve Wallace is, races on iRacing. If he wins the Daytona 500 and pulls a shocker tomorrow, you could very well win that $5 credit if you are racing right now in the Daytona 500 here on iRacing. Your top two on the low line, John Costa, Joel Holt. They have not changed in the first 35 laps of this race. We complete 35 this time by, and it looks like the third-place driver might be Lewandowski this time. Lewandowski still showing, now showing in the third position as scoring updates here within the PSR TV booth. Costa continues to lead this thing. He has led every single lap thus far, but pit stops, they're a coming, Tim. Indeed they are, and it's going to shuffle the deck a little bit. We have, I do believe, upwards of 20-some drivers still in this lead pack. 25, if you look back all the way to that number 17, a Landon Harrison. So if one of these drivers has problems on pit road, if they come a little hot down onto pit road, have to lock up the brakes, might cause an incident on pit road, or if one driver plans to take two tires and ends up taking four tires, something along those lines, they could very well end up one more or two or more laps down if this race goes green for a long while. The last thing any of these drivers wants to see is a yellow flag. It may give them a chance to gather up their, their thoughts and catch their breath, but what it also does is it puts them out here for more time. These drivers are already looking at three to four hours of pure racing, and you start throwing in a lot of yellow flags, you're going to go over that four-hour mark, and you're going to be extremely tired at the end of this one. Indeed, you would be right now. There's only four drivers up on the high line, which would signify that some of these guys are setting up to head down to pit road for the run to the first pit stop of this event. And so far, Daryl, you mentioned we did have a little bit of a uh, pushback at the start time, but right now we're running a lapse time, 32 minutes and 37, 38 seconds for 38 laps. That's not too bad around Daytona. No, it's not bad at all. You're looking at 47 second laps around this place. They are circling this track in the blink of an eye, or almost the blink of an eye, a little bit slower than that, perhaps. But 47 seconds around here is uber quick. Guys throwing the hand out the windows. Mitchell Hunt and 
believe Chad Coleman are coming down pit road this time by. So the number nine might be the first driver to come down onto pit road. Looks like he's going to peel off this time indeed. Chad Coleman coming to the attention of his crew. Going to woe it down to 55 miles an hour, and he'll be the first onto pit road. Coleman, the first driver to take the opportunity to jump down pit road, and that happens at the completion of lap number 38. So just about 40 laps is what these drivers are looking at for fuel here, I think. As Coleman pulls away from his pit box, I do believe he will be joined by Mitchell Hunt and James Wallace as a lot of these guys now coming through corner number three. We'll see how many of the lead draft now peels off again on lap 39. Racing action continues here on the racetrack. Costa continues to lead. If you're Costa, do you wait and go in at the last possible minute or do you go in pretty soon? I think if I'm Costa, I'm waiting to the last possible minute just in case there's that pit yellow that we all dread. And I believe you have to have that mindset if you are in this lead draft, not only if you're John Costa, but if you're mid-pack, let's say you're Jim Orlando right now, fifth car on the low line, I would say that you would have to have that mindset as it looks like we got at least one car peeling off this time to come down onto pit road, looking for a number on that one. It might be the number four heading down onto pit road. That's Stephen Gilbert, and he's the lonely driver on pit road. That's lonely down there, and... Uh, we talked about how long this race will last. If this thing goes green flag, we're looking at just about three hours factoring in pit stops and the like with some yellow flags and with extended yellow flags, we could look at, we could be looking at three to four hours. This is a long race. This is a marathon for these drivers and they have to be in marathon mode. They cannot yet be in sprint mode. And if you mention going green from flag to flag, there's no breathers. You have to come down on pit road and you have to hit your marks every single time you come down to the service and to the attention of your crew. A lot of these guys in the top 15 staying out on the racetrack this time by. So you would have to think with these guys starting to stretch it and the likes of Chad Coleman coming in a little bit early. Maybe they're short pitting or maybe these guys up front are just trying to get every single lap they can into their fuel. I'm doing the math here on a 40-lap strategy, and a 40-lap strategy is pretty much dead on, and it would kind of put them right in that zone to be able to complete this race on as little pit, sto as little pit stops as possible. Going more than 40 laps, I don't see a huge benefit to it, Tim. Right now, we're working lap number 42. Maybe if we go three extra laps, maybe if they go 45 laps, there might be a little bit of an extra advantage to that. But a lot of these guys now working down low. Mosganoff goes up high to catch, catch Thomas Lewandowski. Now he pops back down low. There's only three drivers up on the high line within the first 15 or 20 drivers in this lead draft. So that would be one of the indications that we are setting up to see some green flag pit stops among these top drivers. I think even if you go to 45, lot number 45, it's still going to be a four-stop race. I don't think there's any way to avoid four stops unless you can somehow make it to lap 50 and you're willing to roll the dice every single pit stop. And it doesn't look like a lot of drivers are. Here they come. Some of the lead pack drivers heading down, and they are led by the number 29 of Matias Jatoy. Jatoy, Joey Smith in the number 14, and behind them is Danny Hugel. Oh, Hugel trouble. The first to hit his pit box. We've got trouble, and Ian D. Smythe, the number eight, is involved in it. Several cars involved. The 25 gets involved late. This will bring out the yellow flag. The drivers that were on pit road, they can either pit, or if they hadn't yet reached their pit stall, they may have to drive all the way through. Those that have already pitted, now the decision is up to them. Do they come back down and pit again? I say no. Take the track position, man. 
I would as well, Daryl. That's the pit yellow that some of these guys were anticipating. And just looking at that, I'm not sure what happened with the number three, but the number three just goes right up the racetrack, just goes straight in the trioval up into the eighth. That's a tough break for Smythe. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what happened with the three to uh, to bring that three up into the eight. Normally, I can try to think of some sort of excuse. I don't know. Maybe the wheel fell off the desk. I have no clue. You would think it would have to be something in the steering for something like that to happen, especially in the trioval, just going dead straight like that. But nevertheless, it puts us under caution for the first time this evening on lap number what is now 45, as these guys will catch the pace car down the back straightaway, and they will get to come down and get fuel in their race cars. Some fuel, some tires, some service done, perhaps, as... Some of these drivers experience a little bit of damage, and the last thing you want here at Daytona, the big track, is damage on your race car. And that will hinder your drafting around this racetrack. If you're down on power, if you have something wrong with your race car, it's definitely going to hinder your performance here at the Daytona International Speedway with the super speedway style packs that we are seeing here this afternoon this evening as the pit lane will be open this time i do believe and it will be open for john costa and here he comes costa's going to lead the field down on to pit row the number 12 machine the go joey logano paint scheme painted up similar to joey logano's home depot ride but not quite exactly as the names have been changed to protect the innocent i guess we'll say as Costa will lead him down. He'll have that third pitch stall, even though he started pole. It's because the top two drivers did not start initially. So we'll see what happens with this run off from pit road. Costa looks like he's fueling up that number 12 machine. Everybody else fueling up their machines. The race off from pit road, and Costa will win the battle off from pit road. Pace comes off in second. Lewandowski off in a third. Slow stop for Joe Holt. He comes off in fifth right behind Parker Hammonds. We'll go ahead. We'll take a quick break. We're going to come back. We'll bring you back with more of the iRacing top split for the Daytona 500. This is PSR TV. iRacing.com is the premier online racing simulation featuring head-to-head -head competition on your PC. Race from your home PC, competing on the world's best real-world cars and tracks. Thousands of race fans and scores of pro racers like Dale Jr. and Justin Wilson are already racing at iRacing. Experience the thrill of victory yourself and go racing today at iRacing.com.
Welcome back to Daytona International Speedway and the second annual iRacing Daytona 500, the second event on the iRacing World Tour schedule in 2011. And our first caution on lap number 43 puts us behind the pace car on lap number 46, Daryl. And some of these drivers that came down pit road just as that caution flag was flying find themselves behind the eight ball at the rear of the field and for some people one lap down and who winds up a lap down the drivers that would have been our leaders arthur lucas james wallace james curtis familiar names howard lebon familiar name reason for that these are the drivers that started on pit road that has backfired on them also joey schmidt and Danny Hugo find themselves at the very tail end of this lead lap. And I believe they will get the wave around if they stay out on the racetrack. A couple of drivers might be faking to come in. Dylan Sharman going to come on to pit road. That's the number 22. That's the driver representing the Australia and New Zealand club. And he does a lot of eye racing on this on the simulation not only on the ovals he does some road racing as well i know uh, for covering the tour modifieds for inracingnews.com he does a lot of tour modified racing as well does dylan sharman as he comes down pit road looks like he'll start tail on this start you know you mentioned the tour modifieds and that reminds me of all the different vehicles that are available for our iRacing members to utilize here the tour modifieds being one of them my favorite being the late model i, I absolutely love the late model the street stock is an absolute blast. I, I don't think there's any vehicle here within iRacing that I can honestly say I don't like. There are vehicles that I can't drive. I, I can't get a few laps or more than a few laps in with the Silver Crown car. Although, since I got my sim boots, I'm a little bit better with the Silver Crown car. But it, it's still a tough nut to crack. And a lot of these cars are very, very difficult to drive. And I can tell you what, Daryl, there's a great core of drivers behind these series. You talk about the Tour Modifieds, the participation isn't really up in numbers that you would say, let's say, with the, the Silverado or the late model car, but there's a core group of guys over there that if you hop into a practice session or hop into a race, they'll be willing to share a setup with you. And I know uh, guys like me, guys like you, Daryl, who really don't have control of some of those higher powered vehicles, the setup is always great to have underneath your race car. Pace car lights are off. We are going green flag racing. Costa pays your top two, your front row. Lewandowski and Hammond will take the green flag behind them, and that's a pretty darn strong duo. The problem is now they're side by side. Hammond's no longer pushing Lewandowski. Lewandowski will have to find a way to get Hammond's either in in front of him or in behind him. And this restart will be critical for some of those guys that are looking to get up to the high line or that are on the high line that want to get down to the low side. Pace car about to duck off. Green flag flies. We are back underway, and it looks like Hammonds will drop in line behind Lewandowski. Middle or inside line getting single file, and that's going to leave the number 21 of Pace hung out to dry right now. And he was one of those drivers working the low line, Daryl. You saw him third in line on the low side when we were going green flag racing in the first run, so he hasn't been on the outside during this race, and I don't think he really likes it. He's looking for a hole down low. He's looking for a hole. If he drags the brake, he might get one. Otherwise, I don't believe he's going to find a hole to the inside because that second group, they're tracking him down, and that second group will close up any available positions that would have come on the inside line. He might be able to find a hole here behind Stephen Gilbert, but right now it looks like Mosganoff on the high side. He wants to get the high side rocking as he's on the extreme high down through the Try oval into corner number one. It looks like the high line starting to form. We got three cars up, up, up on the high side. Looks like the 21 of Pace will try to get in behind the number four. Mosganov will drop in behind him. Now, who will take the chance? Who will look to the high side? Or will everybody low line for a little bit and run some single file? 
I think once you see some of those guys that were on the high side on that first green flag run, Thomas Lewandowski, you see, you see Parker Hammonds right behind him in third place. If you're Mosganoff back there, maybe you pop up to the high side. But right now, I think these guys are content to run low, at least for a few laps, and try to log some laps. We are one at quarter distance through this race, 50 laps complete. 50 down, 150 laps to go as these drivers starting to log a few laps. As we mentioned, there are several other splits going on. This is the top split right now. And these are the drivers who qualified in, qualifying quickest of the other drivers, and that's how they got into the top split. The other splits down below, the, let's say some of the drivers that didn't qualify, Daryl, they would be split in two races by their I rating. As your top drivers in this race, about your top eight or so, are on the low line. Looks like the 29s, the first driver looking up high. Mosgnoff will every now and then take a peek to the high side as well on the number five machine. And I think he's just waiting for a high side to form. And I think he would love to lead that high side. And that may alleviate the temperature problems we were seeing earlier with him. And we saw a lot of guys up there running on the high side that are up in this first pack. But looking back here, John Adams was one of those drivers running on the high side, Daryl. He's in a second pack back here, and these guys are getting racy back here around 25th place. These drivers enjoying the sights and sounds of iRacing here at Daytona. We want you to be able to do the same. We want you to feel the same. So here's what we want you to do. Forget about the neighbors. Don't worry about that loud problem or, or the noise pollution problem. Crank up your speakers and sit real close to the screen and enjoy the sights and sounds of iRacing.com's Daytona 500. sights and sounds of the Daytona 500 at iRacing.com and if you get signed up today you get three months for the price of one and you could find yourself in the Daytona 500 next year indeed you're right Daryl and looking at the world tour schedule I believe the next event is the icebreaker at Thompson and correct me if I'm wrong I believe it might be with the street stock car so you want to head over to iRacing sign up for the buy one month get two free get the three months and take part in the icebreaker Thompson Speedway is a phenomenal racetrack as well and it's one of those racetracks that as this with all these racetracks here within the iRacing uh, software is replicated to the millimeter down to the millimeter the track is replicated uh, if there was a gouge in the track when they scanned it from the week before, that gouge lives forever here within the iRacing software. Whoa, little wiggle from the number seven of Parker Hammonds on that low line in, in third place. And, and you look at Daytona International Speedway, Daryl, the bumps is a perfect example of down to the millimeter scanning of these racetracks from iRacing. And a lot of these guys flirting with some of the bumps and a lot of these guys, especially in the last couple of laps, flirting with that yellow line down near the apron. Now, they're allowed to go underneath that yellow line. The only stipulation is they cannot advance their position underneath that yellow line. They can drive down there all they want. Not a lot of banking down there. It doesn't make a lot of sense to go down there, but they can go underneath that yellow line all they want, provided they do not advance their position. 
And with these race cars and how they're set up and with the bumps, it's probably not wise to go down there in the corner. You talked about not a whole lot of banking. You go from the 33 degrees of banking down to the apron. It could very well upset your race car. We saw it with Parker Hammonds a couple of laps ago as he went through the tri-oval and got his left wheels on that groove change. So watch some of those drivers as they try to be aggressive. Probably in the last 20 laps of the race, you might see something like that happen. You look out the rear bumper of Anderson Pace, looking back at the number five machine of Eugene Mozganov. Mozganov, one of our Soviet drivers. You can see the hammer and sickle on the hood of Mozganov's number five machine as they head down this front stretch towards the tri-oval here at Daytona. The tri-oval that was put in because there was no other way to make it two and a half miles, and Mr. France wanted it two and a half miles. And as they now go into corner number one, you see the high line starting to form, or at least some drivers wanting the high line to form. One driver being passed on the apron there. Uh, you look up high, though, it's, it's Stephen Gilbert, and he was one of the first drivers, Daryl, to come down pit road under that green flag run that we had at the start of this race. So it looks like that paid off for him, and now he's got a couple of drivers up on the high line wanting to try to get to the front of the field on the outside. And this is what these drivers needed. They needed to see somebody start to make that high side work, and that's exactly what they're seeing. They've seen it earlier on in the run with this recent yellow flag. Now they're going to start to see some more drivers trickle to the high side, and you'll see some more drivers maybe from fourth or fifth position jump to the high side and help that high line out again. And especially if you're up in front, if you're Thomas Lewandowski, if you're Parker Hammonds, if you rode that high line in the first half of this race or the first quarter of this race up to that caution flag on 43, I would want to jump up to that high line and see what it can do as you look at Costa, Lewandowski, Hammonds, and Holt, your top four on the inside. Then it goes side by side for fifth. I'm not so sure about that, Tim, especially right now at this point. You rolled the dice earlier on in the race, and you gambled and gambled and gambled, and it did pay off. However, when you, when you win in gambling, it, at some point you got to say, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna cool my jets for a little bit. I'm gonna back away from the table for just a little bit. Maybe I'll hit up the buffet. And I think right now Lewandowski and Hammonds, they're in second and third place respectively. They're just sitting there at the shrimp table, going, hit me, hit me again, hit me again. I don't think they're worried about getting to that high side right now. They are perfectly happy with where they are. On the opposite hand, though, if some of these guys do get up on the high side, we're only working lap number 60, still early in the event, and we only have, let's look at this, 19 drivers, I do believe, in this lead pack right now, so there's not a whole lot of ways to fall, especially back to the rear as we got one car up here. That is one lap down. I believe that's Sean White up on the high side, and he's already uh, one lap down. He's going two laps down to the field right here. That's going to make for a very, very long evening for him as he goes his second lap down. Costa has had a nice evening thus far. He's led all the green flag laps. He's failed to lead a couple laps under yellow flag conditions. But other than that, it's been John Costa and the John Costa show. You've got to wonder how long this domination can go on. I think right now there's two things that are keeping John Costa in the front of this field. First and foremost is, oh, Lewandowski down through the grass. This could be bad. Oh, right up in front of Mosgadov, and we are stacking them up. Oh, we have at least a dozen pairs involved. The 35 hard lick, the 29 hard lick back into the one, and the one heavily smoking. Thomas Lewandowski, tough break for the NASCAR iRacing Series World Championship driver. And it looks like he just, when he went down there, he came right back up, and he gets into Mosgadov, I believe it is. So about the eighth place on back are going to have damage from this one unless they somehow dodged a major bullet. Unbelievable. Lewandowski got forced down to the inside. Possibly some contact between Lewandowski and Hammonds. Lewandowski just never lifted. Never lifted. Or he was off the gas and on the binders, but it looked like he never lifted, never lost any speed, and came right back up onto the racetrack. And as you see the replay, you might want to ride on board with the number seven of Parker Hammonds. It looks like the bump draft, we keep talking about the bump draft, Daryl. It doesn't look like it was totally 100% square between the seven and the one. It looks like the seven might have hit 
about three quarters of the bumper on Lewandowski's race car. And as you mentioned, once that happened, shot him into the infield. And it didn't lift. Days of thunder. Don't lift off the gas. Aim for the smoke. And some people hit and some people missed. You know, I'm watching the in-car from Lewandowski, and Lewandowski never lifted either, boys. It's just hammer down all the way around, and Lewandowski winds up involved in this one and heavily involved in this one. Tim, I'm not sure why Lewandowski didn't lift, though. I'm not sure. That's definitely going to end his night as we got pit stops happening on the racetrack. Hammonds into his box, and it looks like he is going to get fuel in that number seven car. We'll see where he shakes out, and we'll see what uh, the leader does, John Costa. John Costa's led a majority of this race so far as he stops in this box. You know, and he may have been off the throttle, but he wasn't pumping the brake all that hard, and he'll wind up on pit road with some repairs to make as will several other cars, and this is going to make for a very interesting, to say the least, remainder of this Daytona 500. We got one guy doing donuts here in the middle of pit road, Daryl. That's Ian Smythe in the number eight. I believe he might have been spun out about halfway down pit road, almost gets hit again coming down onto pit road there on the right side of pit road. So Smythe having a tough entry into pit road, and he's already got a crinkle in the back end of that race car. Tim, it looks like we may have boots of car communications with the driver that up until this point has dominated tonight. Tim, you've got Jean Costa. Jean Costa, it's Tim Terry up here in the PSR TV booth. You get a copy? Sure do. Running in position number two on the scoring monitor right now. A big wreck happening just behind you with Thomas Lewandowski. Did you see in the rearview mirror all the carnage that ensued? Yeah, I did. Uh, looked, looked like a scary wreck for sure. Now, we look at lap number 64 right now. We're still shy of the halfway mark. What's the strategy going forward for this number 12 team? Uh, well, the crew chief uh, has been calculating some of the numbers, and looks like we'll be able to do a, a three more stops here, and uh, we should be good on fuel. So I'll probably stick to that, try to stay out as long as I can. I mainly just pitted right there, so I'd be in the fuel window. Um, I'm just going to ride around. Hopefully I can get behind Mitchell and then just log laps. Now the low line seems to be the place to be at this point. We've seen some guys in that first run and go up high and be able to stick with the low line if we get down to about 10 laps to go and the high line is making the moves. Can the number 12 get up there on that high line and make some progress? We'll try for sure. Uh, it all, it all, it's all going to depend on who's leading and what kind of car they got. Uh, if I got a better car than them, I think uh, we can make the high line work. Going to be interesting to watch. Be as we get going here, we'll let you get back to racing, John. Before we let you go, is there anybody out there you want to say hello to, or any final thoughts before we let you get back to green? Um, well, not not anybody else other than uh, Jamison Spees, Jesse Agerson, Jason Wolfing, and uh, GoJoyLogano.com. There we go, John Costa. John, we wish you all the best. Thank you. You know, 
Tim, as we mentioned, there are multiple splits going on at the same time here for the iRacing.com Daytona 500. We're going to take you for a peek in. Chuck Johnson is watching the second split. Here's your little glimpse into split number two here on PSR TV. Chuck? Yeah, there I'm over here watching these guys checking in, and they just uh, took a green here on lap 55 for a restart. Um, Dave Swindell has jumped out to the lead, and he is followed closely by Danny Hansen, uh, Marco Pettitin, Garrett Prigster, Rich Savage, Joseph R. Smith, Joe Thompson, Dustin Lingert, Kenny Hump, and Ricky Harden round out your top ten. Uh, so far, this restart has been pretty clean. Um, they are trying to pair up a couple here at the front. Uh, looks like these guys are keeping on pace with the... Uh, the uh, first split there anyway, about the same laps. Uh, I can't see exactly how many cautions they've had so far, but these guys seem to be having a pretty good race of their own here, and it looks like they've only lost two cars so far. Uh, maybe we can add four to that from whatever that last caution was, but uh, these guys seem to be having a pretty good split of their own tonight. Thanks, Chuck. We'll check in with you a little bit later on for perhaps some more splits and some more information throughout the course of this Daytona 500. Tim, many, many races going on all at the same time, and if I say many, many more times, I'll sound like the guy from Police Academy. And lots of big names in those races, Daryl. I know Chuck mentioned the likes of Rick Savage, Ricky Harden, Dustin Langert is one of those drivers that's used to the short tracks getting on the super speedway here this evening. If you didn't have a good qualifying lap, you could very well be back in a split with a lot of big name drivers who might not have had a great qualifying lap. That's the great thing about this iRacing Daytona 500 and all the World Tour events as the pace car pulls off. In the top split, it's Mitchell Hunt and John Costa leading them to green. Green flag flies. Costa will try to drop in line right in front of Hammonds, and he does. So Costa does exactly what he said he was going to do, try to drop in line and get behind Mitchell and follow him around and log some laps here in split number one. And it looks like Hammonds was a little squirrely getting up through the gears. He's going to hit the bumps in corner number one as it looks like we got one driver in front of this pack, Darrell, that just came off pit road. That's Jatoit in the number 29. It looks like he's going to go one lap down. He's going to wind up a lap down, possibly more, but I believe it's just going to be one lap down for Jatoit. And he'll be able to track up with this lead draft, but he'll have to fall in line wherever he can find a spot and just kind of hope to be able to get back onto the lead lap before this thing is all over with. High side starting to form Daryl, Joe Holt in the number 11, Stephen Gilbert in the number 4. We saw Gilbert up high on that second s s little sprint at Green Flag Racing that we had, but really couldn't get the high line going. He's got John Adams now in tow back there as well, so the, this high line starting to gain a couple of horses. High line starting to gain up some speed, and, and somebody just asked me, what's Police Academy? Are you kidding me? You've never seen the Police Academy series. It's one of the classics out there. Maybe I'm just showing my age. Parker Hammonds goes to the high side as well now, so Parker going to the top side. And he goes up there from that third place position. He's got Joe Holt behind him. He's got Stephen Gilbert, John Adams. What a strong high line that is at this point. But as I say that, the low line starts to team up, and it looks like the high line will be back to at least fourth place. But that high line starting to build momentum. They should be able to track down the top two or three cars. So the high line with that momentum, low line losing a little bit of momentum here but now Parker pulls a little bit further ahead of that high line than he would like to you need to keep that line nice and tight as they close it on lap traffic I believe that's James Curtis up high in that number I believe 34 car up there so he will go one lap more down he'll be two laps down and we're going to see some three wide racing here Daryl Curtis trying to give some room to these lead lap drivers as they work their way by I believe that is Curtis going another lap down and that's the 39 car up there three wide with Gilbert down low John Adams is going to have his opportunity to go there as well it looks like everybody's going to clear that lap car as he'll slide in behind on this high side at this point still down low your top three uh, your, your high line though being led up by Parker Hammonds and there's a lot of strong competition up there I believe they need one or two more cars to really make it work though 
Yeah, they'll need a few more cars up there to make that high side work. And right now, not a lot of takers going to that high side. You've got to give credit to John Adams and guys like Parker Hammonds and the 11 machine uh, for going to that high side and trying to make it work. You've got to do what you can. And, you know, right now, maybe it's kind of you're going, ooh, I wouldn't go to the high side right now. Everybody's on the inside line. But how are you going to know what your car will do on the high side later on in the race if you don't experiment now? These drivers know they have plenty of time to get back down to the inside line, maybe work their way up through traffic and find themselves back up in main contention. Try the high side now. See what you've got for later on. And you mentioned it. This is a perfect time to try it. It's not lap 150 where it's really going to matter. It's lap 70. Still a long ways to go. And a couple of guys there going down to the low line, the, the seven might have tried to go down to that low line or maybe tried a little bit of side draft. I'm not sure if he was trying to find a hole or trying to get a little bit extra speed down there, but it looks like he got that little extra speed. Did Parker Hammonds as he battles pace for position number four. Parker Hammonds is one man show up on the high side, at least for the time being. We'll see how long that lasts as the low side starts to gather up momentum. Hammonds could find himself shuffled out of this thing if that high side decides to go extreme high side, and they're thinking about it right now. Down the back straight away they go guys are slicing and dicing for position the top three on that low line 21 and 7 is the battle for position number three as they go into corner number three right now the seven looking to get up there to Langman in that number 25. Little dicey as the number 24 got a little bit out of shape Joshua Christman he gathers it back up and does a nice job as possibly a little bit of a nudge from the number 29. Trying to get a little nudge there to get up and get some extra positions here. You, you mentioned, Daryl, that every position critical, but right now, if you experiment, try to draft with some new drivers, it might not be all too bad at this point. 29 back there, though, in this lead draft. He's, uh, I believe he's one lap down, Daryl. He's trying to push to the front to try to get that lap back. But boy, oh boy, being a little bit aggressive at this point. Well, you know, here at Daytona, aggression is one of the things that you need to have. But it's going to be bottled aggression, especially when you're sitting a lap down like the 29 is. And he wants to get up there. He wants to get back on the lead lap. We're on lap number 73 right now. I'd rather be on the lead lap by lap 100 than still trying to fight to get that lap back if we're past the halfway mark in, let's say, 30 laps or so. These drivers concentrating so hard. They've got to be white-knuckling at this point. It's so easy for us to say, yeah, they're just kind of logging some laps. They're kicked back, relaxed and just turning some laps around this racetrack and it looks so easy to do but there there could be nothing further from the truth Tim it does take a lot of concentration to run around this racetrack as the 27 and the 4 almost make contact that's Steve Wright and Steve Gilbert up there the 4 goes down to the low side and, and you talk about concentration you got to listen to your spotter you, you got to make sure that there is a hole down low the 4 just went down low you got to make sure that that hole is there and make sure you don't make any contact with anybody else it's all about concentration it's all about knowing where you are on the racetrack the 11 car way to the high side here comes Adams down to the inside oh they're shuffling behind him we got trouble behind them Daryl Carr upside down oh almost gets t-boned back there I believe that might be Steve Wright I do believe and he was right behind these guys going three wide, and we got at least a half dozen cars involved in this one. And Pedro Sousa in the 18 did get T-boned, and he was the car that was upside down, spinning across the racetrack, almost got T-boned the first time, then slid across the racetrack and caught a T-boned driver's side, and all I can say about that contact and that incident, thankfully we are in a simulated environment. All the drivers will be okay.
Indeed they will be, but I'm sure the pride will be wounded. And of course the I rating and the safety rating is in effect for this race as well. There's a lot of 4Xs from that incident going on there, Daryl. And we're trying to see exactly what happened. It looked like the 32 of Chris Overland got into the 36 of Kevin Bradshaw, and that's what sparked that whole incident. Not sure if Bradshaw had to lift or if Overland just drove into the back of him. It looked as if Bradshaw may have had to lift, however. And this gives these drivers, Daryl, a perfect opportunity to possibly come down on the pit road and top off the fuel in the tank as we work lap number 75. 75 will be completed this time by, looks like the top guys might be staying out on the racetrack. Mitchell Hunt will come in. John Costa will stay out. Pretty much a mixed bag. A lot of these guys, though, heading down pit road. And going back and taking a peek at that as these drivers head down pit road, Tim, I can tell you that, uh, yeah, the 36 did have to lift you get into the back of the 39 and uh, that's what caused the 32 to get into the 36 so it was one of those accordion effects it started way ahead of these drivers but it wound up involving them looking at the pit stops mitchell hunt is still on pit road and he's getting past left and right daryl the 10 car is going to lose a lot of positions on pit road oh boy still sitting on pit road and i believe he might be the last driver off Possible problems for the number 10 as he took an extended visit on pit road, Tim. Indeed, he did, Daryl. Just pulled off a of pit road, and a lot of these guys, you talk about a four-hour race, he might have had to go to the bathroom possibly to get out of the race car or get out of his cockpit and, and, and run down the hallway. Well, let's find out. Mitchell Hunt, this is Daryl with PSR TV. You got me, buddy? Yeah, I got it. What was the deal with the extended pit stop? Did nature call? Yeah, it did. Um, uh, a little bit earlier than what I wanted to, but yeah. That and uh, I kind of had it use this reset that we had. Um, I kind of got some damage on that previous caution. So you've used your one reset. You've also used the facilities, so you should be good to go for the remainder of this thing, right? Yeah, um, just got to dig up there this soon lap traffic and everything to uh, get back up there, but that shouldn't, shouldn't be too hard. Now, you've never seen what Tony Stewart's had to do before? What, what the heck, man? You're not that committed? Nah, I'm not, not that committed. All right, buddy. Best of luck working up through that field. You got uh, sponsors, friends, teammates you want to give a shout-out to? Uh, no sponsors. Uh, give a shout-out to the guys on TeamSpeak. Uh, they know who they are. I'm not going to go down the, down the list. I'll take too long but yeah um thanks for uh thanks for everything you know all right there you go that's mitchell hunt he'll be working back up through the field momentarily as we get set to go back to green flag racing mitchell will be in the number 10 machine as he has been all night long but it's a new number 10 machine speaking of new a new not so new leader tim and that's John Costa in the number 12. Looking back here, though, you talk about drivers with one reset, Daryl. Thomas Lewandowski in the number one is all the way back up to position number five with his brand new race car. It's got a little crinkle on the rear end, but that shouldn't hinder the process or progress of that number one of Lewandowski. It's Costa, Pays, Adam, Moss, and Lewandowski, your top five. And look, Parker Hammonds is back behind Lewandowski for fifth. 
Tim, I do believe we've hooked up your headset so you can have booth commu to car communications with Eugene Mosganov. Timmy? Let's see if we can get a hold of Eugene Mosganov running in 16th place. Eugene, you got a copy? Eugene Mosganov, it's Tim Terry up here in the PSR TV booth. You got a copy? Uh, sorry, man, I put English. I don't speak English. I'm from Russia. The p pace car lights are going off right now. What do you have to do to get to the front of the field? Peace. Uh, toilet. So we're going back to Green Flag Racing, Eugene. We wish you all the best. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. So, Jean Costa continues to lead. Anderson Pace sits in second. John Adams is third. Fourth is Chris Moss. Fifth is Thomas Lewandowski. Sixth belongs to Parker Hammonds. Then it's Kevin Bradshaw, Brian Macklin, Stephen Gilbert, and Joshua Christman, your top ten. And looking back, 11th through 20th, you have Joe Holt, Dave Langman, Alexei Loma, William Halliburton, Eugene Mosganoff, Danny Hugel, Alex Kahn, Christopher Smith, Mitchell Hunt, and Ian Smythe. A lot of strong guys here running mid-pack, Daryl. Fans, don't forget, this coming Saturday, one week from tonight, you'll be able to see some road course racing action as the drivers head to Spa for the opening round of the Drivers' World Championship road course action. Green flag flies here. We are back underway, Tim. And the 12 gets a great start on the inside. John Acosta will have Anderson Pace following right behind him. John Adams back here in position number three as they get up to speed in corner number one. By the way, Austin Atkinson doing some spotting for John Adams, so if Adams just makes an immediate hard right-hand turn into the outside wall, well, it's Austin's fault. You always want to blame the spotter when something goes wrong, and it looks like the spotter might be telling him to go high, and that number six is John Adams looking up high, going into corner number three. Yellow flag is out. That would explain the high move from John Adams, not quite sure. It was, we're hearing it's the 28 car, the 28 car involved. Joe, Joel Edick was involved in an incident, and that's what brought out this yellow flag. Oh, and lots of damage to that number 28 race car as he went spinning in the corner. So he, if he hasn't used his reset already, Daryl, I'm sure he's probably going to have to use it right now as that car is damaged on all ends. And it looks like he might be retired from that one. Tough break as... Uh, Joel Edick, the number 28 car. Looks like he is done for the night. So the field will slow down behind the pace car down the back straight away as the field will be collected behind that Mustang as we will work lap number 80, complete lap number 80 the next time by. Let's go ahead and take a live peek in on that second split again. The second split again taking place simultaneous to this first split as you can take a peek at that for at the second split as our first split is under yellow flag conditions. Tim, Rick Savage leads the second split here, and he's done a, a great job. Rick is one of our more experienced sim racers. I remember Rick all the way back from the NASCAR 2003 days. 
Indeed, a very well-respected sim racer is Rick Savage, and you look at Andrew Berger back there in position number two, another driver that's coming up through the ranks. We haven't heard a whole lot of his name, but he's starting to get well-known throughout the iRacing community right now, running in position number two. In what way to get your name big in the iRacing community by winning one of these splits in the Daytona 500? Swapping positions back and forth in that second uh, split here with, with involving the iRacing Daytona 500. Looks like a battle for about third, fourth, or fifth. Some great racing taking place in all of these splits. And again, if you sign up now, you're going to get three months for the price of one. It'll give you a year. You have one year to get yourself ready for the next Daytona 500. As you watch Dave Swindell in that second split battle it out for a position near the front of this field. What a show these guys are putting on back there. What about Ricky Harden, another great name that we've known since back in the NASCAR racing 2003 season days, Daryl, up there battling it out. The steel horse himself, Ricky Harden. I always think of Ricky Harden when I see steel horse racing. A very big stable back in the 2K three days, and Ricky Harden looking to get a great top five finish out of this one. And I believe that's the Trinity Tattoo Company. I know he runs Trinity Tattoo on his race cars. 32 cars remain on the lead lap in split number two. We have a little bit less than that here in split number one. 22 cars remaining on our lead lap. And a lot of drivers, one lap down and two laps down, and that will happen in a long 200-lap race. And I'm sure those guys in that split, along with the guys in our race as well, trying to stay on the lead lap. So we're awaiting the return to green flag racing action in split number one. You're getting live look-ins with split number two here as part of the iRacing Daytona 500. Several different splits taking place all at the same time. Rick Savage still leading over in split number two. And as you look there at the top ten, a lot of fantastic race cars there racing at Daytona International Speedway, some two and three wide racing. And we're seeing that not only in our split, in that split, and, and the other splits that are going on. A lot of these guys enjoying the super speedway racing here on iRacing, the two and three wide form. Back into split number one as the pace lights are still on. We're getting set for a return to green flag racing. Those lights should go off next time by the stripe. And we'll have 82 laps complete, working the 82nd of 200 laps here at Daytona. And down the back straightaway we work, it's still John Costa, Anderson Pace, John Adams, Chris Moss, and Thomas Lewandowski, your top five. And you look at the resets that we've had, Daryl, you look at Lewandowski, we mentioned he already had that one reset. But I, I do remember that when he did have that incident, he was in front of a, a seven car. And Parker Hammonds right now running right behind that number one of Thomas Lewandowski. Yeah, we'll see if that uh, incident replays itself as history sometimes does repeat itself. We'll see if Lewandowski and Hammonds can play a little bit nicer this time on the backstretch. And I, I think, you know, Hammonds knows exactly what happened to to turn Lewandowski, and Lewandowski knows exactly what happened to get him down through the grass and how that could be avoided as we get set to go back to green flag racing. I don't think we'll have an issue with these drivers. I don't think we will either. These guys have learned from their mistakes, and I'm sure we will see some green flag racing out of them as we are doubling up, and we will be going racing next time by the Stripe Costa has led a majority of the first 82 laps that we have completed. We're working on lap number 83 right now. And as we mentioned, 22 drivers the last time by scored on the lead lap.
Tim, I was, I was thinking about this. What do you think about next time we do a big event like this and there's multiple splits? We'll do a split screen here on PSR TV. You take split one, I'll take split two, and we'll broadcast them simultaneously. That wouldn't be a bad idea, get all these drivers covered in this field. And, of course, I'm not sure what the exact number is on splits for this Daytona 500. I'm sure one of our behind-the-scenes guys can get us a number on that, but I'm sure we're up above the, the double digits when it comes to splits in this Daytona 500. So there'll be a lot of guys at the end of this evening that are happy, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of guys that are, are disappointed after their run at Daytona. You know, there's a few towns in Texas where high school football is really big and there's two football teams within the same range of the local FM radio station. They'll use the FM radio station and they'll broadcast two different games at the exact same time on the same station. One on the left channel and one on the right channel. It's kind of a neat way to get around something. Now if we were to try to do that with our splits here, we'd wind up with, uh, with a multiples of the Brady Bunch screen though. Here's a story, the Daytona 500, green flag flies, we're back underway. And Pasta gets a great start, Pace falls in behind Adams in third, and it looks like Parker Hammonds is stuck on that high line. That's one of the disadvantages of starting on that high line, Daryl, especially if you want to be down low. If not, you might as well blow the whistle. Freight train coming through. Woo woo! Parker Hammonds trying to slice down to the inside line, and he does so. Somebody on the apron back in the back of this pack. These guys trying to find a spot on the low line, and some of them that can't find a spot, Daryl, find it below the yellow line. And again, perfectly legal to do so, provided you don't advance your position. We, we have to stress that. As long as you do not advance your position, you can go below that yellow line. Indeed you can. A lot of these drivers are, are trying to find that, that spot in line. It looks like Parker Hammonds and Joel Holt. Holt comes down in front of the 24, I believe that was, a Joshua Christman. We almost had an accident there, Daryl. I'm not sure how much Holt had him cleared by, but it wasn't by much. Parker Hammonds brushes the outside wall. That's not the way to get this car to go fast here at Daytona and that's going to lose him a lot of ground. Indeed it is. He falls back into the clutches of Dave Langman in the number 25. That's outside the top 10. Meanwhile up in front the 6 of John Adams on the high side trying to get it working but he's got a couple of car lengths before he reaches the next driver on the high line the number 36 of Kevin Bradshaw. Several drivers now dive to the outside line so the outside line starting to turn on the heat just a little bit all of a sudden it is the place to be up high john adams kevin bradshaw and i believe a couple of other drivers like langman like parker hammonds up at the rear of this high line trying to make it work we currently have 16 drivers in this lead draft working up on the high side and a little bit of a second pack starting to form eighty five laps complete one hundred and fifteen laps remain this time by the stripe it'll go down to one hundred and fourteen laps remaining still not yet to the halfway point as you ride on board with the number six looking back on that high line john adams is trying to get it working but a lot of guys moving down low and getting the position look at thomas lewandowski now down low in the number one looking at position number four trying to take it away from john adams Lewandowski with that car a little bit askew, a little bit bent up, but still running quite quick here in the draft. I think outside the draft, Lewandowski would be a sitting duck, but in the draft, you can do some amazing and remarkable things. Indeed you can. If you get paired up with the right drivers on that line, whether it's high or low, you can go places, especially here at Daytona. Side by side for fourth, your top three are single file on the low line. It's Costa, Pays, and Moss. Now your top three. Costa, Pays, Moss, your top three. Adams side by side with Lewandowski battling for fourth. And the push for Lewandowski is coming from Stephen Gilbert. The push for Adams is coming from the 36th of Kevin Bradshaw. 
And we haven't talked a whole lot about Bradshaw this evening, but he's now up in the top 10, making his way up and, and slowly gaining positions up on that high side. He's got Joe Holt behind him and Parker Hammonds. Two drivers, no stranger to sim racing. And you see a lot of these drivers, Daryl, with the either the black or the blue stripe on their back bumper. I believe Bradshaw might be one of the only ones in this field without one of those colors on the back. He's got a B license. The green stripe on the back of Bradshaw's machine as that stands out almost like a sore thumb compared to the black and the blue stripes on the rest of these drivers. And you see the Daytona 500 tomorrow. You'll see a lot of the veterans not really wanting to drive with the rookies. But right now, it's pretty much the same thing with Kevin Bradshaw. He's got that B bumper. It might be a little bit of a caution to these A drivers and maybe to some of these pro drivers. He might not be as experienced as some of these other guys into this cup car. Maybe not want to drive with them. But right now, look at where he is right now with the six back there with Joe Holt as well. A lot of strong competition on that high line with that 36 car. And I just double checked through the field and he is the only driver with a B license in this top split. But you know what? The facts are the facts. He made it to the top split for a reason. He's not here by happenstance. He's in the top split. He earned this spot. He deserves to be here. And why not work with the, work with the racer? After all, he's getting the job done. Why not get the job done with him? Indeed, you're right, Daryl, and John Adams right now with the push from the number 36 was up to, I do believe, second place. Aaron looking to get up to now third place in the middle of the corner. That's Chris Moss down low in the number 19. He has his hands full with that number six, and pushing him is that number 36 of Kevin Bradshaw. This time by Costa continues to lead, but it's now up to third for the high line. Watching the 19 and the 6 as they battle for position. Again, the 6 getting that good push. The 19 is Chris Moss. Moss trying to hang on to that third spot, but nowhere he can go. He can't protect it. He's trying all he can to get that low line to move to make sure he does not lose that third place position to John Adams. He's got Lewandowski tucked up tight behind him, giving him a push to get him into that third place spot but to no avail right now Adams in the high line looking strong on lap 91 Adams just rooting for that high line going come on boys come on boys it's time to go it's time to go they're trying to get to the front of this field Adams wants to lead it halfway there's no bonus points in this Daytona 500, but it would sure be nice to say you led the halfway point in this event as John Adams looks on the high side, the sim boot car trying to give these guys the boot and lead a couple of laps here. So the high side continues to gain ground on the low side. At what point, if you're on that low side, do you go, you know what, that high side looks fast, I'm going to that side. You know, if you're back outside the top 10 right now, Daryl, you're on the low side and you have a line up high, I'd say why not, especially if you know your car will handle. Up on the high side, it looked like Parker Hammonds was going to go in the middle for a moment there off corner number four, but to no avail. But if you're somebody on this low side right now that has a car on the outside, I think you're pretty much trapped down there. There's no holes to move up high. And even back here, I believe this high line is about to be joined by about six or seven more. The 15 back here is going to latch on to the back. That's Arthur Lucas. Art Lucas is one of those drivers that's one lap down, fighting to get back. Nice wide shot. You can see this lead group of drivers in split number one of the Daytona 500 on iRacing.com. Again, you're watching a race on iRacing.com. You can get over there involved at iRacing.com. You can get one month for new subscribers, get two months for free. You get all that free content that the racers normally get, and you can get out there racing and start building up your license, and maybe you could find yourself in the Daytona 500 next year. And there's so many new series that are coming up as well. You mentioned new content, the street stock coming out in 2010. 2010 was just a banner year for iRacing. And you talked about next week's event a little bit earlier, Daryl. The F1 car and Circuit Spa Franco Champ, two new pieces of content from 2010 that will be used in the DWC Road next week. And, of course, the most recent time we saw Daytona utilized was with the NASCAR iRacing Series World Championship season opener. What a race that was. 
Rayal Fala took that win home. And as a result, Rayal Fala, Tim, will be our guest on Hot Lap Radio this coming Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. And I believe as well, Darrell, you have another driver that excelled at Daytona on the real racetrack as well. Some driver that finished possibly third in some nationwide race today. Yeah, third place finishing Landon Castle will also be on the show. So we're looking forward to that. And then it's back to the simulated world of the iRacing, uh, the NASCAR iRacing Series World Championship as those drivers head to Las Vegas after that. We'll try to get the winner from Las Vegas on, along with Josh Parker, the lightning rod, and some guy that finished, I believe, second or third or fourth. I believe he was fourth, as a matter of fact, during that nationwide race, and also qualified on the pole for, uh, for the Cup Series as well. And that's going to be a big night. You will not want to miss that on the hot lap. And speaking about missing Mitchell Hunt, put his car into a hole on the inside line that possibly wasn't there at one point, but he somehow made it work Did the number 10 of Mitchell Hunt. He was three wide, and you talked about that little pee break that he might have uh, executed, Daryl. He's now up into the top 10 and slicing his way to the front. Oh, what a relief it must be for Mitchell Hunt to work his way back up into the front of this field, and to be running as strong as he is as uh, you know it, the bottom could have fallen out there when he had to take that little break and answer the call of nature but for his sake it did not and on the low side right now the the car looks good he mentioned he used his one reset as well Daryl so he's trying to get up to the front of the field he's making these evasive moves but he's making sure that he does it safely because if he ends up in another wreck, it could be game over for that number 10 as the 30 car slots in right behind him. Yeah, that's the 30 of Danny Hugel drop, dropping in line behind the number 10 of Mitchell Hunt. And Parker Hammonds up on that high side trying to get some things working up on that outside line. Hammonds would like to get back down to the inside line, I think. He's been trying on a couple of occasions to get that number seven down low, but he just can't seem to find a lane to get down there. The low line tucked up tight together. There's not a whole lot of holes in there as Parker Hammond's looking. Oh, boy, we got contact. 36, the six around. We got over a dozen cars involved in this one, Daryl, and I believe that might have started with a bad bump draft in the corner. And John Adams winds up on his roof, finally flops back over onto his wheels, but Adams... He got the brunt of that one, and it looked like it might have been a bad bump draft, or no, actually no, it was the 21 of Anderson Pace came up the racetrack, pushed Adams up into the outside wall, and all hell broke loose. After that, Errol, he gets into the safer barrier, and that safer barrier takes you in and then spits you out, and when it spit John Adams out, Kevin Bradshaw just happened to be down low, and then all hell broke loose behind. A lot of good cars involved in this one. Joe Holt, Parker Hammonds. You mentioned John Adams sliding on his roof down the back straightaway. Hammonds got some airtime as well. The 27 involved. A lot of stout cars involved in this one that are going to have to use their toe if they haven't already. So a huge incident takes a lot of cars potentially out of this one. Included in them is Parker Hammonds and John Adams, two very stout race cars, Tim. But there's a lot of cars up in front that dodged a major bullet. John Acosta, Anderson Page, your top two, the 19 of Chris Moss, and it looks like they might be heading down onto pit road, possibly to the attention of their cruiser. At least some of them might be heading down to pit road and it looks like they're all going to head down at least in the top five hey, everybody heading down pit road or at least the majority of these drivers as we're closing in on lap 100 why not make a run down onto pit road <laughs> at least our lead lap drivers are making a pit stop on the 
while taking the opportunity to make a pitch stop. I believe Joe Holt might have stayed out trying to lead a lap, but it's not going to make that much of a difference for him. I don't think it is. Chris Moss pulling away from his pit box. Mitchell Hunt pulling away as well. Some guy standing to make a lot of ground. It's going to be John Acosta coming off a of pit road. Thomas Lewandowski, and I believe Moss is there as well. Chris Moss going to come out in third. Let's go ahead and take a quick break here as you're watching split number one of the iRacing.com Daytona 500 live on PSR TV. iRacing.com is the premier online racing simulation featuring head-to-head -head competition on your PC. Race from your home PC, competing on the world's best real-world cars and tracks. Thousands of race fans and scores of pro racers like Dale Jr. and Justin Wilson are already racing at iRacing. Experience the thrill of victory yourself and go racing today at iRacing.com. Welcome back here on PSR TV. We've just passed the halfway point. 100 laps are complete here, Tim. Indeed they are. Daryl working at 101 on the racetrack, and there's some drivers that have taken their toes after this recent caution. You, you talk about John Adams taking a wild ride down the back straightaway on his roof. There's a lot of guys that are damaged after that one. Some of them didn't have their toes available. It's uh, it's going to be a long haul for some of these drivers in the second half. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, you hate to see that happen to these drivers, as we'll see if John Adams... John Adams tried to get some repairs done, but it looks like it's not going to work out too well. And there's a lot of these guys, Daryl, that are, are thrashing and trying to get back out so they can survive. And, and as you mentioned, John Adams' car is, is bent 10 ways from Sunday. It's dog tracking towards the outside wall. Tim, I do believe we're trying to establish boot to car communications. Have you caught up with Parker Hammonds? See if we can get communications with Parker Hammonds, driver number seven. It's Tim Terry up here in the PSR booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you. Wild ride in the first 100 laps of this race. Walk us through what happened in that number seven. 
Well, you know, Tim, it was a really uh, interesting race there. Um, we started, you know, like 35th or 31st or something like that. But, uh, you know, we were just on the outside trying to get up there. I was working with Lewandowski. You know, we worked pretty good together. But, um, you know, we're just, just riding until the last, you know, uh, you know, 50 miles or so in the race. And, you know, just got caught up in the big one there. And these guys are doubled up down the back straight away. The seven car sitting in the garage area. A tough way to end the Daytona 500. 2011 coming up. What's the schedule like for Parker Hammonds on iRacing? Where are we going to see you racing? Uh, hopefully you'll see me on the real tracks more than you will on iRacing. But, uh, you know, you never know. Um, it's kind of hard, but, you know, we'll see. And we wish you all the best in the real racing world as well, Parker. Before we let you go, it's shout-out time. Anybody out there you want to say hello to or any final thoughts from your run in the Daytona 500? The mic is all yours. I'd just like to give a shout-out to everybody on uh, Team PHR. Um, Zach Hudson, Justin Brooks was, uh, you know, Justin Brooks was a really good spotter tonight. You know, he uh, kept the pedigree in Paula, you know, out of trouble for the most part. But, you know, nothing he could do there. But, you know, just everybody on my team and, uh, good job to every, everyone broadcasting the race, and thanks for iRacing, um, putting the race on. There you go, Daryl Parker Hammonds, driver of the number seven. Not where he wanted to finish, in the garage area, but these drivers that are still on the racetrack, back to green flag racing on lap 103. Indeed they are, and one of the drivers that's back on the racetrack, but not exactly racing, is John Adams. That car's still damaged, but he's going to try to complete at least one more lap pass a couple of the drivers that won't complete that extra lap and maybe wind up parking that car. Unfortunately for John Adams, looks like his night is at the very least hampered, probably done. A yeah, tough break for John Adams in that number six car. Nevertheless, up in front, these guys are getting single file in your top five. It's Costa, Mitchell Hunt now in second place, Thomas Lewandowski, Moss, and Pays your top five. Your top two, Costa and Hunt, they've swapped positions back and forth a couple times. Hunt had to go all the way to the back to answer the call of nature, but now Mitchell Hunt right back up there in the second spot. And How's that saying go, Tim? The cream always seems to rise to the top. And that's what we are seeing right now, Daryl, and no pun intended, he is in the hunt for the Daytona 500 victory as Thomas Lewandowski looks low. Down the back, straight away, Moss and Pace, your top five. And now we have a battle for sixth place. It's Smythe in the eight on the inside, the 27 of Steve Wright on the outside, side-by-side side for position number six. To the outside line, yet again, trying to build up a little bit of momentum, trying to work their way back towards the front of this field. And it always seems that the top side takes about five to ten laps to start to commend him. Indeed it does. It takes a few laps for those drivers to venture out to the high side to feel like there's enough drivers and feel like the, the high line is strong enough to support a run to the front of the field. I believe we're coming up on a piece of lap traffic there on the high side. Can't get a number on that one, but he will go one lap down and a couple of three wide moves there. You know, Tim, if I'm outside the top five, I'll go to the high side right now. Mine as well. you got to kind of establish that high side and see what your car will do. You're not going to win this race running the inside line unless you're John Costa. As you ride over with the 27 of Steve Wright looking at back to Chris Moss and the number 19. I, I believe you're right, Daryl. We, we talk about strategizing in this race. We can go 40, 45 laps in the fuel, let's say. Once we get to lap 155, we really start pushing to the front of the field. We're on lap 106 right now. We still got at least one pit stop until that point. If you're going to gamble, this is probably the time to do it. I would say we have probably two pit stops coming up, 40 to 45 laps. Uh, one pit stop is going to put you about 10 laps short here. So I would say you probably have two pit stops between now and the end of the race. And why not try to split them up, maybe 30 laps or so a run? That could very well happen. We could see some drivers short pit, and that could very well be the strategy that wins this split of the Daytona 500. John Costa, Mitchell Hunt, Thomas Lewandowski, your top three. But look at that high line starting to form. 
There's more guys up there now being led up by the number 23 of Alex Kahn and guys behind him along with Stephen Gilbert. I see Joe Holt up there. They're starting to form and they're starting to bring that field up to the top five. So the outside line yet again starting to build some momentum to build some some speed up on that high side start to track down that low side and I think the low side just sort of trying to again settle in get some laps under their belt it's not yet even close to go time still over 200 miles remaining in this race indeed there is 108 laps being worked on the board still under 100 laps to go in this event just under the halfway to go in this event so there's a lot of laps to go to get to the front of the field these guys in the high line trying to advance their position i believe most of those drivers on the lead lap the 24 up there though trying to uh, benefit from that he's currently two laps down is joshua christman and he is the fourth car up there daryl in the 24 trying to get one of those two laps back Trying to steal one of his laps back. He needs to get out in front of the race leader, get a yellow flag, then do it again. And that's not going to be easy to do, although everybody else comes down to pit. He stays out. He could get the wave around. He could very well, but he'll need to, at least two cautions in order for that to happen to get those two laps back to get himself in contention. But it's one of those racers' mentality, Harold. Don't quit until the absolute last minute you do not want to quit because you still have a race car underneath you it's still got all four corners on it and you still have a chance to win this thing i just had a streak of mine that i was quite proud of actually and i had completed every single mlr race mlr 360 the uh the three the xbox 360 league that i compete in on wednesdays and fridays i had completed every race up until last night and last night I got too much damage, couldn't keep the car underneath me at my favorite track, no less, and I wound up with a DNF at Laguna Seca, and that hurt. And that's what you got to do, especially if you're a racer out there. And we saw John Adams a little bit earlier on. Of course, he uh, can't compete in that race car the way it was torn up, but still trying to get out there and complete as many laps as you can, especially in a big event like this. Oh, one driver in the back here hitting the wall. And I believe he might be down on the uh, apron there. I'm not sure who that was, Daryl, but there was one car that smacked the wall back there. I'm trying to figure out exactly who it was, and I don't know who it was that got into the outside wall. It could have been the number two machine of Nick Ottinger, but we're hearing it was the two machine of Joey Schmidt. And yeah, the 14 currently not on the racetrack, Daryl. It's one of those warp issues that we see. He's having connection issues right now, I do believe. But down the back straightaway, that car just went dead right into the wall. And then it disappeared. So that's a tough break for him. And it looks like he is, is still experiencing those connection issues. Yeah, and looking at Schmidt's connection, it looks like it's a quality issue, not a ping issue. Uh, which means his computer is communicating just fine back and forth with the server but the information is getting lost at his computer and unfortunately he has lost his connection and his race is likely to be done. And if he has that racer's mentality, he can still come back, connect to the server and still race, but he'll more than likely be out of contention for the victory because he will be numerous laps behind the pace. He's currently scored his one a lap behind the leader, John Costa. As they go down the back straight away and speaking about being behind the pace, Yanni Pintanen is about to be one lap behind the pace as he's down on the apron. Just getting out of the way of these leaders as they work their way by again. One, probably two more pit stops left to come. If they can make it to lap 150, 155, yeah, they can go the rest of the distance, but I don't think they can go that far. I don't think they can go that far either. It's time for these guys to start making some strategy calls and seeing when their drafting partners are going to come in to see if they can maybe make a little bit of a strategy out of this race. You could very well see some of these guys short pit to win this Daytona 500.
Costa continues to lead as he has done for the vast majority of this race. You ride in car with a 21 machine of Anderson Pace and we have been in car with him more often than not. We're going to owe him cab fare by the end of this race. A lot of great in-car shots, a lot of great shots around this Daytona International Speedway and, and you mentioned the down to the millimeter scanning of these race race cars and these race tracks a fantastic simulation that you were seeing here put on by the iRacing Motorsports Simulation people if you have not got involved in iRacing it you head over to iRacing.com and if you're a new member you buy one month you get two for free and you get to enjoy the numerous series that we have over here Daryl and of course the next World Tour events coming up as well the World Cup of iRacing you can take part in that as well there's so many things you can do your future and your options are really wide open here within the iRacing world and maybe you don't want to focus on the oval side maybe you want to focus on the road racing side and try to get up into that DWC like the Sturgis boys do or like Gregor Hutu does that is an option that's open to you as well here within the iRacing world and great vehicles for any kind of racing. I mean, you, you've got the Williams F1 car, you've got the Indy style car, all the way down to the Mazda and the Pontiac Solstice on the road course side. Uh, I, I personally like the, uh, the little open wheel cars. I think they're a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not very good in them, but I like them. They're, they're a lot of fun, the little star Mazda cars. Well, the Star Mazda has a ton of grip. You saw it here a couple of weeks ago for the World Cup of iRacing. And speaking about a ton of grip and a ton of room, look at the number 23 up on the high side. The four pushing him as well. Where did the high side come from? They're looking to take the lead away from John Costa. Blink, 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 and here comes the high side as the number 23 of Alex Can working hard. Can, can, can? I believe he can. And on that high side, he's looking for the lead. He's had Stephen Gilbert pushing him for the last dozen or so laps to get him up there. And they've had guys jump ship to that high side. And they snake down the back straight away. They're up to Mitchell Hunt in the number 10. Side by side with the second place. Or now making the third place car of Thomas Lewandowski. Lewandowski has survived some incidents out here on the racetrack. He's used his reset, and a couple drivers had some issues with controls being set up, and that's why John Adams didn't have his reset. He used it when he had to reset some keys. And that's just a tough break for that team, and that's the, the downs of, of iRacing sometimes and the downs of, of racing in general if you have something bad go wrong such as that we're coming up on some lap traffic as well Daryl and some strong cars Christopher Smith and Matthias Jatoit into that number 29 who was very strong earlier in the race they're currently hanging on to the lead lap right now so I'm sure once Costa and the rest of these guys get up to them it could be a little bit difficult uh, as those guys will want to get back up near the front of this this pack to stay on the lead lap Costa and Hunt work their way through turns now one and two here at Daytona International Speedway. Again, this is the iRacing.com Daytona 500. You're watching the top split here on PSR TV. The fastest drivers that qualified their way into this event is it looks like Jatoit's going to go one lap down to the field as he's on the apron. They work by him down the back straightaway into corner number three there. Now it's still side by side for second place. Can trying to get up to Hunt and trying to take that second place position away. Costa continues to lead. Second spot is Hunt. That outside line kind of disintegrated momentarily. Now they're gathering themselves back up, and they will work their way back up on that high side. The high line starting to draw side by side with Mitchell Hunt again. And I believe some of these 
spotters are trying to communicate with each other, some of the crew chiefs trying to communicate, trying to figure out when these guys will head down pit road next, Daryl. And I do believe they're targeting around lap 130, which is about another 10 or so laps away from this point to head down pit road, which would mean we would have two more stops left. That would mean we've got two stops, 130, and then about 170, 175 would be the second stop, and that would be their final stop of the evening. And hopefully, keeping our fingers crossed, we can go green flag at least for the majority of that distance. And I believe these guys can. They've shown at the start of the race, and they're showing now that they can go two by two, stacked about 10 deep here at Daytona, and not make a whole lot of contact. Of course, there's a little bit of bump draft going on, but they are doing it cautiously to not upset the car in front of them. Out of the trioval, down to corner number one, Acosta continues to lead, but you see Mitchell Hunt poking that nose out, maybe trying to get some air, but I think Hunt's content to ride behind Costa at this point. I think Hunt's content to ride right behind Costa as well, and Lewandowski also content to sit where he is right now. Uh, after all, they know they have to make that green flag pit stop coming up in about 10 to 15 laps or so. Some of them can stretch it if they have to. I don't think they want to stretch it. It all comes down to timing in this one. But that pit stop, again, you've got to be on that low line for that pit stop. And these guys on the high side, there's a couple of guys that have switched lines, Daryl, but a lot of these guys up high, they know they have five more laps, at least before they have to start thinking about and strategizing to get down to that low line. So they have not quit yet. That number 23 up high of Can, Gilbert up high as well. They're looking to push to the lead. They still have a few laps left. Oh, contact being made up high. We're going to go four wide down the back straightaway. Three and four wide, that never works. The 11 gets involved and we're gonna spin him around. Yellow flag flies. 11 and 19, hard contact. Oh, Joe Holt up and over. Once again, he did two full turns around and I believe the 19 car gonna get impacted hard as well. That's Chris Moss, Chris Overland also involved in this one. And I believe a lot of these guys already used the toe. Pretty sure the 11 already used his toe, and that's going to be a tough break for Joe Holt. Indeed it is. There's a lot of these guys back here that have got heavy damage. The Chris Overland machine's coming on to pit road. There's a lot of damage to the right-hand side of that race car. It's tracking to the left. That's not a good sign, and I believe his night might be done. Drivers, we believe to have been involved in this one. The 33 of William Halliburton, the 8 of Ian Smythe, Danny Hugel in the 30, the 29, uh, 39, I apologize, of James Curtis, Joe Holt in the 11, Kevin Bradshaw in the 36, the 26 of Sean White, Chris Moss in the number 19, Alexi Aleski Iloma in the number 16, Chris Overland possibly involved, as was Michael Campbell and several other drivers as the rest of this field works their way by as they were able to kind of slow it up, blow it up, and work their way through. And now we work at 123. We'll see if these guys come down pit road and see how their strategy differs. They were trying for 130, but it looks like John Cost is now coming down into pit road. He's got the 33 behind him smoking. Uh, some of these guys come down, Daryl. Some of them stay out. Pitch strategy starting to show its ugly head here, or... It's beautiful head, depending on how you look at it. Mitchell Hunt will retake that top spot that he held for a little while earlier on during this race as John Costa will lead several drivers down onto pit road. Costa getting service on his race car, and he'll be down and away, so he will win the race off pit road. Pays will come off in second. Gilbert back there as well, and then everybody else fighting for position as they head off pit road. Can and Coleman among those. So Hunt is your race leader. Lewandowski sits in second. Third is Steve Wright. 
Indeed they are, Daryl, and as you're looking here, we might see some of these guys at the end of this caution come down and top off the fuel tanks to get themselves a little bit closer to what their strategy might be. The, the pitch strategy, as you mentioned, might be rearing its ugly head at some of these teams. We're going to take this opportunity to give you another glance over to split number two. Chuck Johnson's over there, and we're going to give you a look at split number two. Chuck? Yeah, Daryl, uh, since we last checked in, we've had three yellow periods here. Uh, it's jumbled the field up a little bit. At the moment, we currently have Andrew Berger in the number one car being pushed by Ricky Harden in the number eight car down on the love side. Uh, Garrett Prigster in the 28 is being pushed by Travis Penny in the 24. These guys have been pretty much uh, switching everything from second, third, fourth, fifth back amongst themselves for the last four or five laps here. Uh, your top ten rundown at the current moment will be Andrew Berger. Garrett, oh, we have trouble there maybe. Yes, we do. Looks like we have a car heading out through the grass. We had some driver there make some evasive action and head down through the grass. I wasn't able to catch a number on it there real quick. The field is still under green regardless with Andrew Berger leading. Your top ten is Andrew Berger, Garrett Prejector, Ricky Harden, Travis Penny, Marco Pitininen, Rick Savage, Kenny Humph, Dave Swindell, Joe Thompson, and Danny Henson at the current moment. Hey, Chuck, uh, what lap are you guys on over there? We're at 125. What do you say we race? Yeah, currently we're at lap 114. Like I said, the pace was slowed by three different cautions. Uh, one of them, oh, we just wanted to caution here again, guys. I see Tony DeBoyce down here out of turn three in the 31 car that's uh, trying to get moving again. Um, ahead of him, looks like we have Stephen Marks in the 18 may have gotten caught up in the middle of whatever happened. Okay, guys, I see that the I see that the 25 car was the one that went through the grass, and he came back up across the track and made contact with a couple of cars, and it took a moment for him to get the uh, yellow out. Our top five is Andrew Berger, Travis Penny, Ricky Harden, Rick Savage, and Kenny Humph. Back to you guys. Thank you very much. Our lights have just gone out. We'll get set to bring you back to Green Flag Racing. Mitchell Hunt is our leader. Thomas Lewandowski, good run still for Tommy. He sits in second spot. Third is Steve Wright. Fourth is John Costa. Fifth is Stephen Gilbert. Some of these drivers taking the opportunity to come down. A lot of these guys staying out on the racetrack. Six through ten sits Chad Coleman, Alex Kahn, Kevin Poretshaw making his way back up after being involved in the big one earlier. And look who's made his way back up into the top 10 and on the lead lap are Lucas in the 15 and Danny Hugel rounds out your top 10. 11th to 15th looks like Sean White in the number 26, Michael Elliott, James Wallace, Pedro Sousa and Christopher Smith. Rounding out your drivers, 16th through 20th, currently on the lead lap, Ian Smythe, Dylan Sherman, Chris Moss, William Halliburton and Joe Holt also being scored on the lead lap. Drivers one lap down include Brian Macklin, Howard Lebon, Alex, Alexi, Alexi Aloma, I had it right the first time, Anderson Peace, and Matthias Jatoit. Two laps down in 26th place is Michael Campbell, Chris Templin, two laps down, Joshua Christman, two laps down, Nick Ottinger, two laps down, and Chris Overland also two laps behind the pace. Landon Harrison showing us three laps down. 
Yanni Pentanen is four laps down. Five laps down is Jimmy Curtis. Joey Schmidt is seven laps down. All these drivers now out of the race. Then John Adams, Dave Langman, Parker Hammonds, Eugene Mosganov, Joel Edick, and Jim Orlando. Those are your drivers. First two, not first. We don't want to say worse because that would be mean. We're getting set to go back to green. Pace car makes that hard left-hand turn down onto pit road. 126 laps complete when they cross the stripe. Green flag flies. We're back underway. Up through the gears, through the tri-oval, it's side-by-side -side for second. Down low is the 27 of right, Lewandowski up high. Looks like Mitchell Hunt goes up high to catch Lewandowski. And a couple of drivers starting to make their way up to that high side. But a lot of them going down low. Daryl, they know it's the place to be right now on 127. As the high line, look at the high line truck down the back stretch. Unbelievably, Hunt is going to lead the charge, but Lewandowski getting a good push on the high side. Indeed, he is getting a push from the number nine car, Chad Coleman, up high. Mitchell Hunt, not sure where he wants to go right now. He goes up high, then he goes down low. Real estate becoming a premium. Here comes John Costa. Costa going to go back to third. It's the first time we've seen Chad Coleman running as strong as he is. Up in the top five here this evening. Coleman showing in the fifth position. That is likely to change, however, as that top line starts to lose momentum. Starts to lose a little bit of steam. Your top three down on the low side. Single file, the four of Gilbert trying to make it four cars. Down low on the low side without any traffic on the outside of them. As Gilbert trying to go to that fourth place position. Lewandowski trying to hold on on the outside. The 23 of Alex Can, your earlier leader on the inside line as well. Five cars versus three cars. Doesn't take a mathematician to figure out that the five-car draft is going to have the advantage here at Daytona. You're right on board with Chad Coleman in the number nine riding on the roof around this Daytona International Speedway as he tries to give a little help to Thomas Lewandowski. Behind them, Daryl, it's getting a little bit strung out. There's two lanes, but a lot of room in between those two lanes. Looks like everybody trying to get down to the inside line, and that's going to leave the number nine of Coleman stuck to the high side. That's not a good place to be for Chad Coleman. Looks like he might have an opportunity if he can get down to the inside now. I think he's going to find his way down there in front of Danny Hugel and everybody behind them trying to figure out where they want to run right now. We're coming up on the completion of 129. We're working lap number 130 right now as the 23 of Khan goes up high. He was the driver that almost led this race from the high side on our last green flag run. Alex Khan or Can, I'm not really sure which one it is. I believe it might be Can. Working that high side, can con either way, all by himself on that high side. That's a lonely place to be. And with nobody up there, he's going to fall like a rock. He might be able to fit in between the 36 and the number 30 back here for about 8th or ninth place. But that's the first opportunity he has. And if he doesn't get in there, Daryl, he's definitely out of the top 10. So now single file, Tim, throughout our top ten. Your top ten, Mitchell Hunt, Steve Wright, John Costa, Stephen Gilbert, Thomas Lewandowski. Then it's Chad Coleman, followed by Danny Hugel, Alex Kahn, or Can, Kevin Bradshaw, and Michael Elliott. And they are getting racy back here around that 10th place position, Daryl. Uh, Chris Moss, Sean White. There's two lanes back here. They're going side by side. 
but it's just that they're back here outside the top 10 one driver back here the eight car Smythe on the apron as he had a close call it looked like off corner number two Smythe gathers it up doesn't pick up any position so there will be no penalty for the jaunt down underneath that yellow line he gets back up in the line as these guys will go side by side. I saw one driver back there having a little bit of electrical problem, a little bit of warp issue back there, but nevertheless, these guys still going side by side. The 8 and the 34 going for a position. I believe that's 13th place. And at one point, Wallace was a lap down as well, so he's worked his way back up onto the lead lap, trying to find a way up into the top 10 here at Daytona. As you look out of the rear bumper of car number eight of Smythe looking back to the field that is side by side behind him. A lot of strong competition back there. You have Dylan Sharman back there in that number 22 behind that number eight looking to make his way up into the top 10 before this is over. One of the guys I'm keeping an eye on is Michael Elliott. I believe it's the same Mike Elliott that has run some races with us in Forza and just kind of loves anything to do with racing. If it's racing, Mike Elliott is interested, and he does a great job, and I believe it is the same guy. He is running an X-Lander design. Indeed, he is running the X-Lander design colors on the inside, the blue and white number 38 and it looks like he is going to gain a couple of positions and solidify his top 10 spot right now as he's being pushed by, I believe that might be the number 14 back there of Joey Schmidt, who is currently in 30th place, seven laps behind the pace. So Mitchell Hunt continues to lead. Steve Wright is in second. John Costa is third. Those top positions have not yet changed. The outside line trying to work its way up towards the front, however, Tim. Watching this double wide battle back here with the 38 on the inside of Michael Elliott. On the outside, it's Hugel. You got a lot of strong competition up there, though. Bradshaw in the 36 was up in the top five earlier in the race, as was the 19 of Chris Moss. They're all on the outside line trying to get it to work. We're coming up on the three-quarter distance mark in about 15 laps or so as we work 136 down into corner number one. Hundred and thirty-five laps complete. Sixty-five laps remain here at Daytona International Speedway as they work their way down the super stretch. As they go past the lap car on the apron, a lot of strong competitors still involved on this lead lap. Darrell, a lot of guys on the high side trying to get it to work, but the high side fizzling out right now, I believe in both the top 15 or so, we might have three drivers up high. They're content to ride right now and try to get to their next pit stop. Several drivers taking evasive action, letting these lead lap cars work by as they drive down to the infield or way up to the outside. And you got to give credit to the drivers that are going a lap or more down. They're giving way and they're letting these leaders settle it amongst themselves. And they know that it's getting down to crunch time, that they got to get their laps back, but they're being cautiously optimistic in that hunt, Daryl. There, there's guys that are trying to get up here to the front of this field and trying to get that lap back. Anderson Pace right now is one lap down. He's about mid-pack right now, and he knows he has a strong car, but he can't win it right now from that position. He's hoping for maybe a quick caution to get away from him. Your top three, Mitchell Hunt, followed by Steve Wright and John Costa. That's your top three. Fourth, fourth position belongs to the number four, Stephen Gilbert. And fifth is Thomas Lewandowski. 
And they are all single file right now. Single file back to about position at number eight. But look at that 27 tucked up tight behind the number 10 of Mitchell Hunt as they go into corner number one. Costa right now running in third place. And everybody up here looks to be content to ride where they are, at least for the time being. I believe we're going to try to get some communication with Chris Oberlin, our 22nd qualifier. Chris, this is Daryl with BSR TV. You got me, buddy? Yes, sir. Chris, not the way you wanted your Daytona 500 to end up. You wind up with a car on the trailer, but at least you were in that top split, buddy. A lot of people would love to trade spots with you. Yeah, definitely, and uh, I'm thankful to be, you know, even in the race. Had a little bit of bad luck there, but you know, it, it's Daytona, you can't do much about it. Thought I was through that last one, but you know, you can never be sure. And nothing is ever guaranteed here at Daytona. Now that you're out of this one, who are you watching? Who are you looking for to take home the win? Oh, well, definitely Mitchell or Gene. They've been up front. Well, Gene's been up front all day, but Mitchell's always, always has strong cars, so. Uh, I expect him to probably be in victory lane after this one's over. So you're going for either Mitchell Hunt or for John Costa, correct? Yes, sir. All right, buddy, before we let you go, let's hear about sponsors, friends, teammates. Who helped get you here? Well, first I want to thank JDR Graphics for coming on the car this week. Uh, Jason Lovofing for helping me with a setup. You know, uh, my parents obviously watching. Jameson Speed is another one. All right. Thank you very much, Chris. Maybe we'll talk to you at another time under, under much better conditions, buddy. Yep. Thank you for having me. That's Chris Overland, Tim. And he would like to be out here still battling side-by-side, -side, but a tough, tough break for him. We do have a side-by-side -side battle here, Daryl. The, the 23 up here in about seventh place, the 14 right behind him. He's multiple laps down. Daryl is the 14, but he's trying to get that high line to the front of this field. Indeed, they are trying to get to the front of this field, and they're trying to build that high line. You're going to get only three cars working that high side, but a few other drivers starting to think about it, starting to contemplate that jump to the high line, and we're still about, oh, 15 laps away from seeing potentially their final green flag pit stops of the night. They're trying to get to that point where they can go the full length of this race or the, the completion of this race on the fuel that's in the tank. I do believe there might be a couple of drivers there up in front, though, Daryl, that did not come down under that last caution flag. We'll have to double check, but they might be a little shorter on fuel than the rest of these guys. I believe you're correct, Tim. That's going to be uh, it's going to be a situation that these drivers will have to watch after. Uh, because they would only be three or four laps away from running out of fuel. We'll have to see as the laps tick on as we work 143 right now. And I believe these guys can go. I think we mentioned just over 40 laps if you really stretch it under the green flag conditions. So these guys are going to really open the pit window in about a dozen laps or so. If these guys have to come in now, it's going to kill their strategy. It certainly will, because now they're off cycle with everybody else, and they still have to make that last pit stop. It would be brutal. Ideally, you can make another 10, 11 laps or so, then come on down, make that final pit stop, and just stay out there and have what you have. And if anybody's looking for any information on that second split, it looks like Andrew Berger has taken over the lead in that second split, so... Great run for him so far, and I believe they're a little bit behind us, Daryl, so they're probably working about 70 laps to go as we are going down the back straightaway. We're hearing Andrew Berger has just encountered some difficulty, and he's no longer leading. Uh, the car is faced in the wrong direction at least once 
throughout the course of the last couple seconds. So Andrew Berger, tough break for him in split number two. In split number one, Mitchell Hunt, still our leader. Hunt leading right. Costa, Gilbert, and Lewandowski are top five. But look at the high line. Here it comes. Danny Hugel going to lead it up on that high side. He's got three cars in that lead draft, including himself. He's going to need a couple of more horses, though, but right now holding his own up there just outside the top five. Again, these drivers not yet turning these motors to kill or not yet turning their phasers to kill. They're still set on stun, still trying to turn some laps, still trying to get to that go point. I'd say that go point is the last 15, maybe 20 laps, Tim. And you look at it right now, a lot of these drivers are used to long races when they race on the iRacing simulation, but right now... We're coming up on the two hour and 30 minute mark. These guys have been in the race cars and in competition for two hours, 27 minutes and counting right now. You have to think once it starts going near the end, especially with these drivers racing overseas, Daryl, fatigue might start coming into the picture as well. Well, absolutely. Fatigue will start coming into the picture. And we talked about the three or four hour race. Mitchell Hunt already had to take a break and gave up a lot of track position to do so, but it was probably a wise move. I don't have to pay for his dry cleaning bill, so it didn't make a difference to me either way, but probably a wise move for him to answer the call of nature. But all these drivers, you know, the human body is the human body. From time to time, you need to do certain things. You either need fluid or you have too much fluid. And as you look at your top three cars coming out of corner number two, down the back straightaway, they go. A lot of strong competition still in the hunt for this one as Wright, Costa, Gilbert, Lewandowski, names that we've seen and heard before, all chase Mitchell Hunt down into corner number three they go. And these guys are coming up on that final pit stop. And it's one of the it's the money stop, Daryl. You don't want to make any sort of mistake once you get to that point. You ride in car of Steve Wright getting a good look at the back bumper of Mitchell Hunt. Right behind Steve Wright we have Jean Costa. As you wanted in car views, you got in car views. Mitchell Hunt leads this field, but Steve Wright give us a ride at Daytona. Fans, you wanted some in-car action, why not take a lap or two with the guy that's dominated this one so far? Let's go in-car with Jean Costa. Just 50 laps remaining in the Daytona 500. 
as we work into corner number one, top four single file on the low side. Darrell, the high line, though, still getting up there. Fifty laps remaining here in this one, and still, Tim, I don't think it's go time for a lot of these drivers yet. I don't think it is either, Daryl. As you look at the number nine car, Chad Coleman, I, I think you have to get to that last pit stop, make sure you are flawless on the final stop, and then go for broke. This race hasn't really been plagued with a lot of caution. These drivers have done a pretty darn good job at getting control of their cars and keeping control of their cars as Steve Wright takes a peek to the outside, then a peek to the inside as Mitchell Hunt continues to run his line through turns one and two you know we we've been relatively caution free thus far in this one tim so it's been moving along quite nicely two hours and 32 minutes since the call to green flag racing and these drivers have been doing a great job a couple of big wrecks but a lot of these guys have got back into the race cars you look at thomas lewandowski as a perfect example to get back into the race car after a tough incident using his one reset to do so at a corner number four here comes the 27 down onto pit road here comes the four green flag pit stops beginning daryl this is where it gets dangerous for those drivers that stayed out the drivers that pitted they are in great shape they can go another 10 15 maybe 20 laps before they have to pit but the drivers that stayed out they have to pit and they have to pit now and it would be a stretch and i'm talking a big stretch for them to make it the rest of the way and the 27 is Steve Wright at insult to injury. He overshot his pit box. The four rolls by as well. Boy, oh boy. Tough break for the 27 is Steve Wright. Now this time by, I believe, Daryl, I see the hand of Mitchell Hunt out the window. Your leader, Thomas Lewandowski as well. We have wholesale pit stops coming on 153. I don't think Costa's going to come down with him. I think Costa stays out on the racetrack, and he does. But here comes Lewandowski and Hunt. Oh, Lewandowski, oh, Lewandowski messed it up. Pass. Oh, boy. What do you think, Tim? Unsafe pit entry there, buddy? I, I would say so. He's trying to get all the grass off those tires, trying to go back and force zigzag that car down pit road. I don't think it's going to work, though. He's going to have to come down, and he might have flat spotted those tires. He may have to take four. We're hearing this time by Chad Coleman has thrown the hand up in the air. Coleman looking to pit this time by. He's worked his way down to the inside line, so he'll be able to peel off out of turn number four and make the pit stop. And as a result, here comes John Costa as well. Oh, around goes the 36. The 36 around. Costa's still going to come down onto pit road. This is going to be a yellow. And we got one more car spinning up here as well. I believe that's the 38 of Michael Elliott. Hard into the back of the... X-Lander car, I do believe he made contact with the wall. No, the 37 comes down Christopher Smith. I don't know if he wasn't anticipating what was happening in front of him, but the 38, he just runs into the 38 in the trioval. I'm not quite sure what happened to, uh, to trigger that, but the 33 and the 36 did get together. And looking back here at the replay, Daryl, John Costa, I do believe, gets some damage from this. Indeed, he does. The 38 coming down onto pit road clips John Costa coming out. The 38 and the 36 made contact coming down. I don't think Michael Elliott anticipated the 36 to come onto pit road, and he gets into John Costa at about 150 miles an hour. That might hurt John Costa's day. It very well could, and Costa was the dominator from earlier on. That's a tough break, and right across the nose of the 38, wow, that's a big one. That's a huge one. That takes a lot of good cars potentially out of contention. And, and the 38 among those got damaged on all four corners of that race car. The 36 took a wild ride as well, and especially if you've been in the race car, Daryl, for two hours and 35 minutes and counting up, you don't want to have bad luck on with with a quarter of the race left to go it, it's just got to be horrible for those guys the pace car tracking down the field and I, I don't believe that the number 12 machine uh has reset so he's got that opportunity to make that reset but 
Uh, still showing some damage on the 12 of Costa. And that's a tough break for John Costa after being out in front for so many laps. We talk about 2010 being a great year for Costa, coming up through the pro ranks, making the NASCAR iRacing Series World Championship in 2011, doing so well in the Daytona 500, and, and, and given it's not over yet, but it just took a massive blow to the back end of John Costa's race car. Yeah, and, and it also takes a big chunk out of his opportunity to win this thing. Uh, you bend these cars up, and they don't work quite as well as they used to, especially here at Daytona. And I believe right now, Daryl, looking at the standings, the four car of Stephen Gilbert back here in ninth place was one of the first drivers to come on to pit road. He might very well inherit the lead of this race. So it looks like everybody's going to be heading down pit road, at least those that still need to pit. Danny Hugel is the race leader, but I expect to see him coming down onto pit road very, very shortly. And here they come down onto pit road, and I believe some of these drivers that even did come down, I, I mentioned Stephen Gilbert there, he might have to come down for a splash of fuel in order to make it to the rest of the way. Here come your leaders down onto pit road, led by Danny Hugel. Hugel overshot. He had to back up into his pit stall. That's a tough break for Hugel. That's going to slow this pit stop down. Indeed it is, but he's going to be right in front of the 40 coming off of pit road of Michael Campbell. Campbell two laps behind the pace. He's still going to come on to pit road anyway with your leaders as Hugel makes the way down pit road, the long pit road at 55 miles an hour. Just a little bit underneath for Danny Hugel. Wants to be safe, goes 53 miles an hour off of pit road, and he will rejoin the field. slid off the track. We believe Tim Terry might have booth to car communications with our driver of the number one car, Thomas Lewandowski. Tim? Thomas Lewandowski, it's Tim Terry up here in the PSR TV booth. You got a copy? Yeah, it's going. Have to ask you about the little grass cutting that went on a little bit earlier. What happened there? Uh, I forgot earlier that I put more rear brake bias in it, and I just got on the brakes too hard entering pit road and locked the rears up and kind of did a death slide and tried to balance between slowing down for pit road and not going off pit road. But uh, luckily I got lucky, caught a caution here, and going to be a wave around car. And going to get that wave around, be back on the lead lap. We're going to have about 15 or so cars on the lead lap when we get back to green flag racing with under 50 laps to go what's the strategy to get to the front of this field to win this race well, it's gonna be pretty hard to get back up front but i'm pretty much just gonna work the high side i think um i might have damage i'm not really sure so it might be a little more difficult than i think but if i don't have any damage i should be able to get back up on the high side pretty easily my car is uh, pretty fast And it looks pretty fast from this vantage point. Before we let you get back to green flag action, it's shadow time. Anybody out there you want to say hello to? Or any final thoughts before we go back to green? The mic is all yours. Uh, I'd just like to thank my sponsor, Wrangler, JR Motorsports, uh, Dale Arnold Jr., all my friends over at the Drill Isle for uh, you know helping me out here for uh, this race in DWC. There we go. Thomas Lewandowski going to roll off from 17th place on this restart. And Daryl, he mentioned that it's going to be a long ways to go to get to the front of this field. But if any driver is going to do it, I'd bet on that number one car. I would too. I wouldn't be uh, surprised to see that number 12 car work his way up through as well. I think John Costa's coming down to get some repairs done and get back out onto the racetrack. And John Costa has been strong all night long. Don't be surprised to see him up there as well. I don't think that rear end damage is going to hinder him a whole lot. Of course, we'll see in about a minute or so when we go back to green flag racing, but that number 12 of John Costa, don't count him out. Don't count Thomas Lewandowski out. Look at Anderson Pace. He got back out. In the 12 of Costa may have gotten the end of the longest line penalty, and 
Mitchell Hunt riding on the apron, trying to save a little bit of fuel here, Tim. And saving a little bit of fuel would be the aim of the game right now, Daryl, as a lot of these guys are going to be mighty close. At least these guys that stayed out on the racetrack that last time, going to be mighty close. They might even be on fumes when they come across the finish line for this 200-lap event. A dry finish for these fuel tanks possibly coming at you here on PSR TV Live. You're watching the iRacing.com Daytona 500 top split. Green flag flies. We're back underway with 158 laps in the books. Look at the 26 up here in the top five, Daryl. That's Sean White looking to get something, make something happen. He's down on the low side now. The 26. First time Tom, I think we've called his name in the top five. Welcome to the top five for Sean White right now showing in the fourth position. Nice run, and you know what? It's not about how long you spend in the top front, it's, uh, top five. It's about where you are when that 200th lap clicks off the board. And right now, Sean White's in as good a spot as anybody. Showing a strong second half is that team. As you look up high there, the four, Stephen Gilbert up high, the nine, of Chad Coleman up high. Oh, boy, the eight wanted to go up high, but... Couldn't go up high when there's somebody else there. So for now, Mitchell Hunt will keep his drafting partner, but I don't think that Ian Smythe wants to stick with Mitchell Hunt. He knows the only way he's going to get around him is to get to the lead of that outside line. He may have the opportunity this time out of turn number two to get up there. If he wants the opportunity, he is clear, but it won't be there for long. What does he do? He stays down to the low side. Does the number eight for the time being? If I was one of those guys up there, Daryl, I might want to hop up there. Look at the four and the number nine. Very strong competitors. Definitely very strong competitors. It would make sense to jump up to that outside line and see if he can't get that push up into the number one position. And Mitchell Hunt might go to the high side himself here. And he does. He takes the number eight with him. They transfer back to the low line through the trioval. And there's some guys back here. The number 22 back there of Dylan Sharman. We haven't talked a whole lot about him this evening. He's up there in the top 10. He has an opportunity. But look at the 15. Art Lucas back up into the top 10. Nice recovery for Arthur Lucas. Lucas was one of those drivers that was a lap down earlier on, along with James Wallace, who's knocking on the door for the top 10. Looking to get up there and make something happen in the final 40 laps of this race. One car back there up, scraping the safer barrier, I do believe. Don't want to do that. I can't get a number on that. 23, I believe, of Can was up there into the safer barrier, and he had a great run earlier. It's almost throwdown time. 39 laps remain here, and this one, I'd say with the last 20 laps, it becomes go time, and that is where we will likely see the the uh, the condensation of caution flags, if you will, as the yellow flags should start to fly very, very soon here in this one. And looking back here, Daryl Thomas Lewandowski having more problems in the number one car. He came down pit road. He had a black flag for, I believe, too fast entering pit road. I, I, I looks like we're, we're seeing, and he comes down to serve that black flag, Daryl, and he's fast entering pit road again. He's not on the racetrack right now. Tough break for Thomas Lewandowski, the New York racer, as we'll see what transpires for Tom. You ride the roof cam of Chad Coleman's number nine machine as he jumps around this racetrack. is very, very bumpy here at Daytona. We talked about this earlier on. As now we get start, we start to get closer to go time, Tim. The bumps here at Daytona become a factor in, in and of themselves. Indeed they do, and this lead draft being split up a little bit. We have a dozen or so race cars up here in the lead draft. There's a couple of guys back there, like John Costa, who are just a, sh a shade off this lead draft right now. So it's time for these guys to go. Art Lucas goes down to the low line in the number 15 car, looking to gain a couple of positions after being on the high line for the last five laps or so.
as you're watching the iRacing.com Daytona 500, the top split. New sign-ups right now if you're looking to get involved with iRacing. New sign-ups right now. You're looking at paying for one month, and you get the next two months for free. Three months for the price of one. You get all that content that the rookies start out with. You can start your way towards the 2012 iRacing.com Daytona 500, and maybe you could be in our top split next year. And so many World Tour events as well that you can get in. I do believe the next event might be that icebreaker event at Thompson. I believe they're running the Street Stock, which the Street Stock, Thompson, comes with the subscription. You want to head over to iRacing.com and get signed up for that. You will not regret it. And as Daryl said, the 2012 Daytona 500 is coming up oh, in about 12 months or so. Yeah, just, you know, 360-some-odd days away from right now. You look out the rear bumper of the number 8 of Ian Smythe back to the number 26 of Sean White, who's done a great job, kind of stayed quiet for the majority of this race, but now that it's go time, or close to go time anyways, there's Sean White up towards the front of the pack. Guys making their names in the last 50 laps of this event. You, you see Sean White up there. You see the 19 of Chris Moss. He's been flirting up there with the top five all race. Daryl been hanging around the second half of the top ten, the back half of the top ten. And now he's back here in seventh place. Fourth place on the low line, looking to make his way to the front as you ride on the roof of the number 26 of Sean White. And, Tim, now that it becomes go time, we talked about the bumps here at Daytona. The racetrack itself becomes its own opponent, doesn't it? In, indeed it does. These guys in, in the first pack are going side by side. If you're back there in the, the second pack, your cost pays. A lot of strong cars. you got to go. Oh, boy, little contact being made at a corner number four. Everybody trying to get back into line, and it looks like everyone will survive. Uh, but that was close, and that's what we're heading towards. We're heading towards incidents like that. We're heading towards guys pushing and shoving a little bit. Yeah, we're just over 30 laps left to go in this race. I believe we're looking at about 34 laps remaining in this event. You need to go, and you need to position yourself to get in a place to win this race. You're not going to win this race right now, running 12th, 13th place you got to get up there, and some of these guys are going to be short on fuel. Maybe that's why Costa and Con are back there. Can Maybe they're trying to conserve a little bit of fuel. Maybe they're trying to get a little bit of draft as the 26 almost gets up into the 9 off 4. The 8 and the 4 touch a little bit coming out of the trial. Well, that's the battle for second spot as the number 9 of Chad Coleman trying to offer up his assistance to Stephen Gilbert. And just right behind them, Daryl, you look at the number 26 car, Sean White. He's developing a push off corner number four. At least he has the last couple of laps. And I'm not sure if it's because he hasn't been up in front with these guys or not. But he's been pushing up the racetrack a little bit. And through the tri-over, tri -over, he left that door open for the number nine of Chad Coleman. Coleman did not take the door. He almost did, though. And if he did, he would have been in a big wreck. Here we go, three wide. Gilbert slides up the racetrack. Coleman takes the opportunity to work his way by, and Gilbert somehow makes it back into line. Boy, oh boy, these guys are going side by side. Three wide racing happening as well. They know they want to make everything that they can out of these race cars, not make a mistake. The 36 of Kevin Bradshaw has just blown up, Daryl. I believe that was the smoke that we saw coming out of four the last time by. Indeed, it could have been as we're watching around the number 15 car. Action starting to heat up here at Daytona as the number nine of Chad Coleman trying to find his way around that 15 machine of Arthur Lucas. Lucas almost gets up into the outside wall, the 30 on the brakes, and look who's working the high side. It's Sean Costa going three wide. Where did John Costa come from? Costa up now into the top 10 on the outside of Art Lucas. Three wide racing happening. Boy, oh boy, it's go time. Oh, trouble. Big wreck. 26 looks like he's done for the day. The 15 of Art Lucas is involved in this one as well. And somehow, some way, 
still on the racetrack, still moving forward, is John Costa. And looking back there at that incident, Daryl, I do believe it might have been the 26. Once again, we talked about pushing up the racetrack, and I believe Sean White might have pushed up into corner number one. You can't push up when there's somebody else in the outside line, and he got contact with the 27. I believe Costa caught a piece of that, but it's not showing a lot of damage on the number 12. I think Costa got more than a piece of that. Uh, may have driven underneath the flipping car in front of him. It looked like he may have caught him just on the hood of the windshield of that 12, though. He might have dodged a very huge bullet. It the car on the front looks clean right now, Daryl. I'm not sure if there would be any damage underneath the hood, but it looks clean from this vantage point. So uh, I, I don't know. John Costa just might have dodged a huge bullet. So here we sit, 10, 30 laps to go. We're going to be 29 next time by the stripe. I would venture to say everybody's going to duck down pit road. Pit strategy will be out the window. You might see a couple of guys gamble on this one. You might see some guys take some insurance down on pit road. I believe a lot of these guys might be opting for insurance. 10 of Mitchell Hunt is staying out. The 8 is coming in. And everybody else is staying out on the racetrack by the looks of it, at least in the top 10. Here comes Danny Hugel back there in the 30. The 19 is coming in as well to Chris Moss. So three of the cars that were in the top 12 coming on to Pitt Road, those guys up in front of them must be sure they can make it on the fuel with this caution flag. They needed this yellow flag to make sure they could make it. Mitchell Hunt was trying to save fuel and... This is going to save him the fuel that he needs. And what an amazing drive up through this field by Jean Costa. Your top five, Mitchell Hunt, Dylan Sharman, James Wallace, Stephen Gilbert. And look at that, the number 12 of Jean Costa. And right behind him, we have a whole lot of talent sitting there as Costa will move back behind Chad Coleman. So Coleman might be scored in the fifth place position as these guys are, are swapping positions back here. Nevertheless, Coleman, Smythe, Souza, Kahn, and Smith, your top 10 the last time by, or at least rounding out the top 10. A lot of strong competition in that second half of the top 10 could very well upset one of these guys near the front. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll take you to the checkers. You're watching the top split of the 2011 iRacing.com Daytona 500 right here on PSR TV.
iRacing.com is the premier online racing simulation featuring head-to-head -head competition on your PC. Race from your home PC, competing on the world's best real-world cars and tracks. Thousands of race fans and scores of pro racers like Dale Jr. and Justin Wilson are already racing at iRacing. Experience the thrill of victory yourself and go racing today at iRacing.com. Welcome back here on BSR TV. One lap until we go back to green. We've got just enough time to take a quick peek into split number two with Chuck. Chuck? Hey there again, Daryl. Uh, yeah, things have been going pretty good over here. We've had another caution earlier on about 10, 12 laps ago. And after the restart there, Rick Savage set in and led the field for numerous laps. He peeled off to the pits a few laps back, so this left with Dustin Linger in the lead, followed closely by Andrew Berger, Danny Hansen, Ricky Harden, Roger Wagner, Joe Thompson, Dave Swindell, Adam Edwards, Rodney Kramer, and Patrick Corbin, your top ten. These guys have been uh, keeping it pretty clean, actually, and our top group here have now pretty much formed up one line, and they're laying down some pretty good laps here on lap 166. And hopefully they, they can keep themselves together and finish it out this way. It's going pretty good at the moment. Thank you very much, Chuck. We know you'll keep an eye on that. And the race is on. Who's going to finish their race first? Will it be split one or will it be split number two? We're going to have 26 laps to go when the green flag flies, Tim. And we have a very competitive race here as Mitchell Hunt, Dylan Sharman will compose the front row. James Wallace, Stephen Gilbert, and Sean Costa, your top five. And I believe this wild card here might be that number nine to Chad Coleman. I don't think we've seen all the, the muscle that that number nine car has to this point in the race. No, I would agree with that. I don't think we've seen all the muscle that that number nine car has. Had. And I think we haven't seen everything or the last from Sean Costa as well. I think Costa are starting or restarting third on that inside line. That's a very good place to be. Here we go to the stripe. Green flag flies. We are back underway. Nice restart for Mitchell Hunt. And that's the best thing that Dylan Sharman could get. He got to the low side as soon as Mitchell Hunt put the hammer down. Great move by Dylan Sharman as we have side by side behind him. That's going to trap John Costa in where he has to kind of run behind and run in line behind that number 34. Right up on the back bumper, the 34 is Costa. Right up on the back bumper, trying to make a move. Meanwhile, the 4 and the 9 on the outside, trying to make some progress outside. They're up to the third place car, the 34 of Wallace. James Wallace sporting Xlander and Vidane on his machine as he's working in that third position. Thinking about going to the high side, and that might be the best bet for James Wallace. Get to that high side and see if that high line will push you to the lead. I'm sure that's what John Costa wants him to do. If he can go up high, that would put John Costa third on the low line. It might get him to third place as that high line now has five competitors up high six down low i do believe oh, seven down low so it looks like the high line maybe if they can gain one or two more drivers they might very well pick up the steam that they need and there's a driver that they needed six to six high line low line the sides are equal wallace slides up the racetrack a little bit he's starting to push in three and four Starting to push up high as Stephen Gilbert gets that wide exit off corner number four. Gilbert looking to get up to third place. He falls back to a side-by-side -side battle with Costa through the trioval. Wallace trying to find room on that inside line, but he's got the number 22 of Dylan Sharman right ahead of him and the number 12 of Jean Costa right behind him. Wallace might want to try to get to the outside as quick as he possibly can. The opportunity is there. I'd go for it if I was him. The eight car back there almost making it three wide. Daryl Ian Smythe trying to get up there and take the road less traveled. I don't think it's going to work at this point. Three wide with nobody behind you. I don't think it's going to advance your position. Maybe not, but darn it all, Tim, it looks pretty darn cool, doesn't it? 
Oh, it does. He's trying to get those positions. Oh, and I believe he wants to put himself in a position to win this race. And I believe that's what the guys in front of him are trying to do. And so far, they're doing it. Oh, contact made nine up the racetrack. We're three wide. We may have seen the last from Chad Coleman. Coleman now drops out of contention up at the front of this pack. And the outside line has disintegrated. And he falls back here, numerous positions behind the number 40 who's lapsed down and behind a lot of these drivers and they might very well have lost touch with this lead draft up here. This lead draft uh, at the end with the 19 here starting to inch away a little bit. Starting to get single file and that might work out well as John Costa tries to peek to the high side, trying to let Wallace know, I will go to the high side with you Let's get to the high side. Let's get out in front of this field. Trying to make those moves now. Trying to get some drafting partners. Here goes Costa up high. Trying to maybe maybe force a mistake. Maybe force that 34 up high. And indeed he did it. Here comes the 12 down low. Costa makes the move to the inside as Wallace goes to the high side. Costa snookered him. Got him to go to the high side, got him committed to the outside, gave him enough draft to get him to the outside of the 22, and Costa drove right by the inside. Veteran move from Jean Costa. Trying to lure him up, and indeed it worked. I'm not sure how it's going to work, though, with Mitchell Hunt and Dylan Sherman in front of him. Maybe trying to lure them up to the high side. It might work with Sherman. We'll have to see. It might work with Hunt. But these guys, I'm sure, will protect that low line. We're going to come up this time by across the stripe and have 20 laps remaining. And it will be go time, Tim. 20 laps to go. It is certainly go time for these drivers. You saw a glance as they are three wide behind the 12 machine. The four, the, I believe that's the 34 and the 18 were three wide. Wallace backs out of it. Discretion, the better part of Valor. Oh, here comes the 12 down low on the 22 with Sherman. It looks like the 12 of Jean Costa going to go to position number two. He's got the 18 back there behind him as well. Where did the 18 of Pedro Souza come from? And look who Jean Costa has caught up with. His drafting partner, Mitchell Hunt. Hunt now has a guy he knows will push him at least until lap 198, 199 right behind him. The smoker of Kevin Bradshaw will go one more lap down now. You, you talked about drafting partners, Daryl. You talked about teammates. Those two up in front, they both want to win the Daytona 500. You mentioned it's go time. They're as far to the front of the field as they can. When does it come that all bets are off and you go for this win? Well, here's the problem. If a yellow flag flies in the last five laps, we could be done. So if you're Jean Costa, when do you make that move? I don't think you make that move any earlier than you absolutely have to. I think you wait till at least 10 laps to go. You mentioned if we get a caution with about five laps to go, there's no overdrive rule. We will finish this race under the caution flag. So I do believe if you are that 12 car Acosta, you have to wait till probably about 10 laps to go. Once we hit lap 190, I, I think it's probably fair game, but you got to time the move right. If not, you might be going to the rear of this pack. And you also have to monitor that high side. That high side could trap you in. So you have to monitor that high side if you're Jean Costa. Costa trying to watch all angles, trying to watch ahead of him for a mistake from Mitchell Hunt, trying to watch behind him to see where that high line is coming, and also keep an eye on Pedro Sousa. We haven't talked a whole lot about Pedro Souza here this evening, and that's because he hasn't been up in the top ten a whole lot this evening. I believe he's running... NVIDIA on the front end of that race car so he's looking to, to bring that car to the front of this field it's just a matter of where he goes does he go to the high line does he bring some guys up there or does he wait for Jean Costa to make a mistake I think if you wait for Costa to make a mistake I think you're going to be waiting until lap 201 yeah Jean Costa has been about as smooth as you can possibly be he's been aggressive when he has to be he's been conservative when he has to be he's driven an all but perfect race had one bit of contact when he was coming down onto pit road. May have had a little piece of the last or most recent yellow flag, but other than that, John Costa has been as smooth as ice. 
23 making his way up into the top five, and he was one of those drivers, Daryl, that was working on the high side early in this race, and now he's on the low side. Does Alex Can in the number 23 possibly work up high if he can get past Stephen Gilbert? High side starting to lose just a little bit of momentum as Gilbert leads that high side charge. I think somebody from the inside is going to have to make that commitment, make that move to the outside line and try to get something to work. And I think it might be John Costa. Costa looks to the high side. Pace car is Yellow out. Flag. We're under caution flag, so that will slow the field down once again. And We'll likely have a start there with about a dozen or so laps to go. This one's going to be exciting coming down to the end. Well, this should be interesting as... We're here in the 14 of Joey Schmidt is the cause for our yellow flag. And Schmidt got a little bit of a tap from the number nine of Coleman. And around he went. And, and looking back there, Daryl, I'm not sure if he got any contact with the, the top of that car of the number nine, the Chad Coleman. But once that 14 went up into the wall, he come, comes back down the racetrack. I'm not sure if Coleman has any front end damage to that race car. I think Coleman might have used his one reset, though, which could very well spell the end of the night for Coleman after being up in front and one mistake, putting him three wide on the outside line, puts him to the back and, and very well possibly at a contention for this event we'll see if anybody takes the opportunity to pit i don't think uh i don't think many people will take that opportunity mitchell hunt stays out costa stays out looks like pretty much everybody will stay out on the racetrack no need to pit here as the 40 car ducks down and then ducks back up looks like nobody will take the opportunity to pit here a lot of these guys in the back sporting damage. Uh, uh, you talked about troopers. You talked about racing instinct. Uh, the 9 of Chad Coleman's beat up on the front end of that race car. I know we saw the 36 out earlier of Kevin Bradshaw. He's 17 laps behind the pace, Daryl. I think he's done now. He had contact with the 14 after the 14 came down the racetrack. So he's done. But a lot of these guys in the back staying out and trying to gain those extra positions. I believe we have boot to car communications set up with Mitchell Hunt. Mitchell, this is Daryl with PSR TV. You got me? Yeah, I got you. Mitchell, you're up at the front of the field. It's been a long time since you had to make that extended pit stop. You're up at the front of the field. You've got John Costa behind you. What are you going to have to do to hold off that 12 car? Um, depending where he kind of, if he does go to the outside or something, if he's got, you know, a runner, so I'll just try. I don't. No, I won't wreck him or anything like that, but if I have the room, I may throw a block here or there, but nothing too crazy, I don't I don't think. Is the plan right now to kind of hug that yellow line and make sure the Costa cannot get a run on the inside? Yeah, um, I don't know if there's too many good cars left anymore. I think everyone's got, or a majority of them got damaged now, so um, I don't think you'll see as much. The outside line, outside line working now, unless you get, you know, a good lead car up there and someone, they're not damage pushing really good. Now, late in the race or earlier on in the race, we saw that you and Costa were able to work together. If, oh, uh, maybe. Trouble for Hunt. Oh, hard on the inside wall. What happened, Mitchell? My steering just died on me. Oh, tough break for Mitchell Hunt and... Oh, that's that's not looking good, buddy. <laughs> I don't think so. That car's not supposed to do that, Mitchell. No, I just went Danny Hamlin style on this one. How old is that car? It looks like it's too young to smoke, buddy. Uh, yeah, it's not quite there. Mitchell, we hate to see that happen. That is heartbreaking. Do you have a reset? No. <laughs> oh, heartbreaker for Mitchell. Mitchell, buddy. I uh, hate to see that, bud. We'll we'll talk to you another time, hopefully under much better conditions, pal. Yeah. Heartbreaker for Mitchell Hunt, Tim. 
you don't want to see that happen to any drivers, and that's that's so tough for Mitchell Hunt. And and now the the one person that might actually be happy about this would be John Costa. The the teams were working together, but he has an opportunity up there to take this uh, take this 500 away. Chuck is over there in split number two. Let's get another live look in with Chuck. Chuck? Yeah, Daryl. Uh, let me see if I can explain what you're seeing here. Um, our leader is Andrew Berger, but the car you see in line here leading would be Rick Savage. Rick pitted on lap 161, and it took the field to lap 174 to come up behind him. Berger decided to hang in behind Rick here and has been pushing him. Uh, Rick is in the 15th position, which Berger is leading. Ricky Harden is in second. Danny Hansen uh, is in fourth. But also in this mix, you see the 32 car. That is Marco Pegli Pelagotti, and he is in the 15th position. So you've got two races combined in this little breakaway we have here. Our current top five is Andrew Berger. Ricky Harden, Roger Wagner, Danny Hansen, and Joe Thompson. Uh, we're working lap 184, and currently we're pretty good in green, um, but these guys have managed to build up a great distance over the next group of cars on the lead lap. Another note, uh, back around lap 140, Andrew Berger was leading and got a little, uh, looked like a bump drive gone bad from Kenny Humpf. Andrew took a spin down the back stretch there through the asphalt, didn't hit anything, but the caution didn't come out. So two or three laps later, we ended up having a single car spin. The caution came out, kept him on the lead lap. He's pitted, worked his way back, and he is our leader currently. Thank you very much, Chuck. Great report from split number two as we are getting set to return to green flag racing and we're going to have 12 laps to go. Tim, wasn't it you that said about a dozen laps left? About a dozen laps left to go in this race, Daryl, and it's anybody's race right now up in the top 11. we got 11 drivers on the lead lap. What about Pedro Souza up there in second place? He inherits that second place position after Mitchell Hunt has his tough luck. I tell you what. It could very well be Pedro Souza's race if he can get a good start here. And right now, John Costa is screaming, please don't interview me. I saw what happened to Mitchell Hunt. Don't you dare interview me right now. We already talked to him twice here this evening, and I don't think anything bad happened. Well, he, he was involved in that incident there with... I believe it might have been the number 38 getting that crinkle on the rear end. So he dodged one major bullet so far. I, I don't know if he could dodge another one. Here we go. 12 laps to go. It's going to be go time. Tim, Terry, let's go green flag racing, buddy. Pace car in, Costa puts the hammer down, and what a start by Costa. Here comes the 23 of Can on the inside, looking for second place. He's got a good run. Side by side, second and third, as John Costa is your leader. He's running that high side. Wants to give the high side as much room. Oh, they make contact. Around goes Sousa. Can gets it gathered up. And we are going to go under yellow flag conditions again. Sharman in the 22 going to go for a long spin down the super stretch. And that's going to be tough for him because I believe he's going to have to start at the rear of this running order if he wants a shot at anything. But he got into Can, And you mentioned it, Daryl. Can saved it. But the 22 of Sharman did not. And he went for the long slide. That'll bring us back under yellow flag conditions. John Costa may wind up with this win, and it would be a very well-deserved win. He might very well, but it's going to have another restart here, and we're going to have Can on the outside line, I do believe, with Gilbert and Moss. And we've seen those two drivers have some 
luck earlier in the race and have some strong runs earlier in the race. I believe third and fourth, if one of those guys in front of them can get a good start, might come away with a podium finish. Indeed they could, and we, we've discovered what might have happened to Mitchell Hunt. Uh, he received a pop-up under his game, or under the software, I should say, and it took all of his steering away, and unfortunately, Mitchell Hunt was out of it, but he's, he's a good sport. He's laughing about it with some friends, uh, and what a what a, a, a heartbreaker for Mitchell Hunt. He could have taken it a lot worse. you got to give Mitchell all the credit in the world for taking it the way that Jim he did. Four. In, indeed, you're right, Daryl. A, a great attitude for Mitchell Hunt, and I'm sure there will be more races for Mitchell Hunt and, and the likes. Just a tough break for him. He'll finish likely in the 20th place position. Ten to go in split number two. We're under yellow flag. Let's pitch to Chuck. Let's split two. Chuck? Yeah, Dar, we're over here with uh, 10 laps to go, and we pretty much exactly where we left you last time. We have uh, Andrew Berger pushing Rick Savage. Andrew's our leader. Rick's still in 14th. Um, Andrew is being followed by the 32 of Marcelo Pelagotti, and he is being pushed by Ricky Harden, who is our second-place driver. Behind them, uh, Roger Wagner, Danny Hansen, Joe Thompson, Dave Swindell, Rodney Kramer, Joel Guys, Patrick Corbin, and Casey Malone are rounding out our top ten here. And we've been clean and green since we left you last time. I keep waiting for uh, I keep waiting for the number eight of Ricky Harden to see if he's going to follow the thirty two of Marcelo Pelagati a lap down in 15th or is he's going to try to make a move here soon and see if he can't catch up to Andrew Berger and make a race of this near the finish line. Uh, Harden looks to be peeled off there. Wow, almost got run over heading to the pits. So Ricky Harden is going to relent out of second place. It looks like Roger Wagner in the 23 will probably take over that position once they hit the, they've hit the line there. Actually, I'm showing Danny Hansen is running in second. So Roger Wagner is filling up the third spot now. And once again, uh, the first and second place drivers are separated by the 32 of... Pelagati. Yeah, I'm getting a report that it looked like the eight stop may have been a quick gas and go. It would surprise me the way some of these uh, cautions have been hitting these guys odd. There's been a great deal of different pitch strategies over here, and uh, the one who has worked out to his best advantage is certainly Andrew Berger earlier at the current time in car number one. Showing Danny Hansen. Oh, tried to make a move there. I almost lost it, it looked like, so he's had to settle back down a little bit. Looked like he wanted to try to maybe get out around Pelagati there, but uh, just didn't have the good angle and almost took him with him. Coming to the line here, we'll start working lap 194. This is an interesting story with Rick Savage here because he's had a fast car uh, from the whole time I've been in this session. Uh, he was leading very strong there before having to do a solo pit back on lap 161. And I think Andrew Berger knew that, so when the field caught him, oh, we've got contact there with the 7 and the 32. The 7 is going around, spinning down the back stretch. Oh, you could see it coming. Oh, the seven to Danny Hansen made some serious contact with the inside wall there. And we just dropped under caution here. Probably going to be starting lap 196 with Andrew Berger, Danny Hansen. Oh, scratch that. It looks like uh, Roger Water will move up. Roger Wagner. 
Sorry. We'll move up to the second place. Uh, Joe Thompson, Dave Swindale, and Rodney Kramer probably round out your top five. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Chuck. Sounds like split number two has got some exciting action going on, and split number one is about to kick this whole thing up. Pace lights should be going off next time by your top five. Jean Costa, Alex Can, Stephen Gilbert, Chris Moss, and Danny Hugel. Six through ten, C. Ian Smythe, James Wallace, Chad Coleman, Christopher Smith, and Dylan Sharman. Ten drivers still remain on the lead lap, and that means ten drivers with a legitimate shot to win this thing. And you know what? There may be 11, 12, 14, 15 drivers with a legitimate shot to win this thing with the way things have been going. And with the pace car lights off now, we're doubled up going back to green. I, I believe there's at least a half dozen drivers that don't have damage that legitimately have a chance at winning. I'm not sure how bad that number nine is back there at Chad Coleman. But he's going to have to do a lot of digging in order to get up here to the top of the scoring pylon, Costa and Can. Costa got a great start the last time. Can going to have to keep up. The 19 and the 4, we've seen strong runs from them earlier in the race. It's just a matter of who gets going and who finds themselves in the line that will take them to, if not victory, possibly a top three run, maybe even a runner-up finish. These drivers have a lot of decisions to make, and they don't have a lot of time to make them. When we get the green flag, there will be seven laps remaining. Seven laps to go here in this one. Costa and Ken will be side-by-side side for this restart. My goodness. And Alex Can, we've seen him work on the high side, Daryl. If you remember back, I believe it was our second green flag run that we had. That 23 car was a rocket ship on that high side. Stephen Gilbert's been fast on the high side, but he's going to start on the inside line. Chris Moss in the 19's been good out there as well. It's just a matter of who gets a good start and who is pushing who to get themselves to the end. We are going to come down, take the green with seven laps remaining. Here we go. We're getting set to return to green flag racing. Pace car is in. Green flag flies. Costa out to the early lead. Alex Can drops in right behind him. Great move by Can to get that second place position. Now the four and the 19. They battle side by side. And if the 19 can't get any help, he might go to the rear because here comes the eight car. Smythe trying to fill the hole. Not going to do it. Now who will roll the dice? Who will go to the high side? There's five cars in this lead breakaway, and already it looks like Stephen Gilbert trying to go to the high side. Smythe trying to go to the high side with him as well. It's going to be two by two behind Costa. Gilbert's worked up high already this evening, but Smythe's going to fall back into the low line. That could kill the chances of the number four working up high. Can, and now the 19 working down low. The eight's going to be there as well. Top three, stay nose to tail, train style racing up at the front of this field. The only driver that has stepped out and is still out on the outside lane is that number four of Stephen Gilbert. Gave it a shot on the high side. Here comes the rest of the pack. They're going to have to go to the high side. Costa will not give up the inside line. Yeah, you're definitely going to have to take that high side around John Costa if you want to take this win away. But right now, the only driver up high is that number four, and he's going to fall back in behind the number eight. Barely Ian Smythe right behind him now is the four, and Danny Hugel is still involved in the action. Costa continues to lead. Alex Can sits behind him, third is Chris Moss, fourth is uh, is Ian Smythe, fifth belongs to the number four machine of Stephen Gilbert. Gilbert now side by side with Danny Hugel. Hugel trying to work his way up to the front. The 23 looked like he was going to try that outside line, Darrell, but came back down to protect his position in second place. Now we see it on the short tracks all the time, Darrell. Do we see the 23 
give that number 12 a little bit of a bump draft and maybe try to get him out of the way maybe when we come down to two to go I don't know that a bump draft right now would be wise. There's a lot of eyes watching and, and trying to move somebody out of the way at Daytona. Could be tragic, and it could, it could cost you a little bit here within the iRacing service. Your eye rating, your safety rating, and also the officials watching this race, making sure nothing bad happens. But if you're looking for the Daytona 500, I'm sure the glory is in the front of your mind. The carrots hanging out in front of your car. You're trying to catch it, and it's going to come up in four laps. Caution. The four and the eight, Smythe and Gilbert got together. They're going to run hard, as hard as they can, but it looks like it's going to go down to Jean Costa. I don't think the lights in the pace car are on, so we're staying green flag racing. The 12 and the 23, they're single file, but here comes the 19 up high. Where did Chad Coleman come from in the 9? Coleman snuck into the mix as well with that damaged race car. <coughs> Coleman doesn't care that the car is damaged. Bring it to the front. There's nothing left to lose. And now on the high side, it's Sherman giving a push to the number 19 of Moss, but they can't get any momentum rocking. There's nine cars in this lead draft, Daryl, and three are up high, six are down low. They need one or two more to make that high line work. They're going to need a couple more takers up on the high side. Costa drifts up and turn four just a little bit, possibly trying to bait Alex Can to stay behind him. The nine car of Chad Coleman pushing that number 23 of Can. Sticks in the air, two to go that time by. It's go time now. Can Costa hold on for the final lap and three quarters? If the caution flies, this race is certainly over. Costa trying to hang on to the inside line, trying to use that yellow line, the double yellow line as his new best friend. They work their way into turns three and four. They will climb the banking here at Daytona. White flag is in hand. Last lap, next time by the strike. Dylan Sherman falls off the high side. That leaves Moss as the only driver up high. Up high goes the Wallace, number 34. White flag in sight of John Costa. One more lap around the Daytona International Speedway. 2.5 miles left to go. The 30 of Hugel. Now on the inside of the 19 of Moss looking for position number four. Colin all over the back of Can and the number 23. Boy, oh boy, this is going to go down to the end. Daryl Morley, take us to checkers. John Costa continues to lead over Alex Can, Chad Coleman, right there in line. Coleman looks like he can push, but I don't think he can lead a draft. Coleman could go to the high side and give it a shot, and he might be the guy to try it. Big wiggle, Hugel down through the grass. They touch behind him. They're spinning behind your race leaders. They're going to bring it all the way down to the line. Costa, your leader. Here comes Alex Can. Can will look to the high side as they work out of turn number four. Costa now down through the trial. We should have it locked up. The Daytona 500 goes to Jean Costa. What a great run for the number 12. Hailing from the Pennsylvania club, Jean Costa takes away the victory. And I tell you what, what a 2010-2011 season that this gentleman has had. He made his way up into the NASCAR iRacing Series World Championship by transferring in through the pro and now he wins the top split of the Daytona 500 for iRacing. Boy, oh boy, what a season so far Jean Costa has had. And the good thing for him, Daryl, is this season's only young. The dream season has just begun for Jean Costa. What a run for Jean Costa. Stayed at the front for the majority of this race. Started on the pole, or took the field of green, we should say as a result of some strategy moves by the pole sitter and the outside pole sitter, and he made it all work. And you know what? The best drivers out there, Tim, they take opportunity, and they turn it into success, and that's exactly what John Costa did tonight. Indeed he has, as Costa rips up the infield here on the front straightaway. Congratulations, and I'm sure we'll talk to Costa in just a few moments' time.
Donuts for Jean Costa as we're going to try to show you the conclusion of split number two as well as there was some great racing all around and I'm sure that the third and fourth and fifth and sixth splits and the seventh split, all of the splits had some great racing in it. Unfortunately, we can only show you split number one and portions of split number two. My friends, the best way to find out how good the racing is is to get involved. Go to iRacing.com. Sign up today. Sign up tonight. Get involved in the racing action. You need a wheel. You need a computer. You've already got the computer. You can pick up a wheel at your local Best Buy. We're going to pitch it over as Sean Costa blows the motor up. We'll pitch it over to Chuck for the conclusion of split number two. Chuck? Yeah, guys, we're getting ready to go back to a restart here with one lap to go. And we have Roger Wagner has resumed the lead because Andrew Berger had to pit, I do believe. And the pace car is peeled off there, and we're getting ready to head to the line. You've got the 23 of Wagner on the inside, the 20 of Dave Swindell on the outside, first and second, followed by the 19 of Rodney Kramer, the 8 of Danny Henson. Oh, we've got contact there. Oh, the 23 and the 20 got together. The 20 is up, caught up the 8. We've got a bunch of cars piling in here. The 32. Oh, these guys have been doing so good on this. And we finally had another big one. See if I can jump up here and see who is going to end up winning this. It looks like it may be Rodney Kramer here in the car 19 may pull one out for us. Sure enough, car 19 is coming up to the line and he will win the second split iRacing.com Daytona 500. And here's a great story for you. Just the last time we checked in here, Rick Savage was on the tail end of the lead lap being pushed by the leader Andrew Berger. And our second place finisher, believe it or not, is Rick Savage, followed by Andrew Berger, Danny Hansen, Joe Guys, Joe Thompson, Casey Malone, Dustin Lugert, Lingert, Roger Wagner, and Patrick Corbin rounding out your top ten. We're going to kick it back over to you guys. Great finish over here. And a great finish all the way around, Tim. What a fantastic race. We were just able to witness John Costa takes home the win. Alex Can takes home second. Chad Coleman is third. Fourth goes to Chris Moss. Fifth to Danny Hugel. Sixth was Dylan Sherman or Sherman. Seventh goes to Christopher Smith. Eighth to James Wallace. Ninth to Stephen Gilbert. And rounding out your top ten, Nick Ottinger. And those are the drivers that finished on the lead lap. One lap down was Ottinger, as you mentioned there, Daryl, but a great finish to this race. A lot of tough running for some of these guys, but Sean Costa coming home with the win after leading 124 laps of this event. Tim, I do believe you've caught up with our race winner, Sean Costa. Go for it, buddy. Down here in Victory Lane with the Daytona 500 winner, Jean Costa. What a wild finish that was. Yeah, man, for sure. Wow. I mean, uh, what a range of emotions, too. I mean, first of all, really, really bad luck there for Mitchell Hunt. Uh, I don't know what happened to him. Maybe his steering lock or something. Kind of looks like uh, Denny Hamlin's deal in, in qualifying. Uh, wow. I mean, just... Just can't believe I'm in vic victory lane right now. Honestly, uh, um, I got the EOL there um, while I was pitting under under green. Uh, unfortunately, an accident came out just before I, I crossed the pit lane line, so that gave me an EOL penalty, similar similar to what uh, Kurt Busch experienced in Watkins Glen. Um, so, but yeah, then I, then from there uh, I was just on a mission just to get to the front and. You know, I got up to second, and I was just going to ride and try to get him on the last lap. But, uh, yeah, I mean, just bad luck for Metro. And, and a range of emotions you, you talked about, Jean. Uh, the 12 
Uh, had a little bit of damage coming onto pit road with the number, I believe it was 38, of Michael Elliott getting into the back end. Talk about coming down onto pit road and, and that incident there. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was quite strange. Uh, I mean, you know, our spotters organized, uh, you know, me and Chad coming together on pit road on that lap. And uh, I guess from what I heard, some some of the other guys were trying to pit with us and they didn't announce anything. And, and all I saw in my front mirror was just Chad kind of, you know, he had to kind of like speed up to try to avoid it because somebody else was wrecking too. So it, it was pretty wild to... Uh, just I would, uh, the caution just came out, unfortunately, at, at a bad time for me, and you know I got the yellow ball. Now the last 12 months for you on iRacing has been spectacular. You transferred into the NASCAR iRacing Series World Championship by making one of the transfer spots in pro. Uh, GS Racing has been good, finished in the the top three over there, and, and now winning the Daytona 500. What's next for Jean Costa? What's the next big accomplishment that you're looking to strike off the bucket list? Wow. Um, well, I, for sure, um, in that uh, the NASCAR I Race and World Championship Series, um, I'm just looking to do, to do good there and kind of establish my name a little bit. Uh, I'm definitely an underdog going into there. I mean, there's a tons of great guys that, I mean, these guys are super good and that's going to be the biggest challenge. I mean, just, just being able to hang with those guys will be my first, you know, big step, I'd say for sure. And showing today, showing today that you can hang with the big dogs before we let you go celebrate the win. Once again, if there's anybody out there you want to thank, any final thoughts from this afternoon's, from this evening's racing action, the mic is all yours. Thanks. Um, well, I just, uh, you know, want to, again, want to thank my teammates, uh, I know myself. I, I, I put in at least 20 hours, you know, working on the setup, and and uh, Jameson Spees, you know, Jesse Atchison, Jason Lofing, they they also themselves put a lot of hours into it. So, um, you know, I also got to thank uh, Thomas Lewandowski, uh, Mitchell Hunt, you know, Chad Coleman. You know, we were all kind of working together there during that race. Um, you know, I got to thank JDR Graphics for painting the beautiful. GoJoeyLagano.com car, and uh, I also got to thank all, all the the Brazilians actually for uh, the, I know they were spectating this race over at the IVR League, so that about does it. I uh, and I appreciate you guys putting on this broadcast. Uh, you put on a heck of a broadcast for sure. There we go, Jean Costa, your winner of the 2011 second annual iRacing Daytona 500. Daryl Morley, I believe you've caught up with our third place finisher couldn't get a hold of alex cam but i believe chad coleman is standing by indeed he is and chad didn't anybody tell you a damaged car can't run at the front of daytona buddy yeah i was uh i had no idea it was that tore up i knew it was a little down on speed uh but i didn't know the front end of the car was caved in that bad uh the last uh last probably five laps i thought it was gonna blow up the Old gate, the old temp gauge, and the water temperature gauge were just pegged. I just kept my foot in it and hoped it made it. No, it certainly made it. I've seen, I've seen modifieds with more unbent sheet metal than you had on that car, and I think the reason it made it, you can't kill a Chevy, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I tried to kill it a couple of times. I don't, I'm not sure how many wrecks I was involved in, but there was a bunch of them. Some of them we missed, and then there was just. So we just didn't have anywhere to go. Take us through those last couple laps. It got a little bit hairy a couple times for you, bud. Yeah, the uh, the last couple laps were kind of calm, with, you know, considering what we went through at the first of the race, dodging wrecks and dodging cars and getting knocked sideways on the apron. I mean, it was just, it was wild. It was a lot of fun, though. I just wish we had a little little bit better car at the end to try to make a move but it was just it was so tore up it wasn't going anywhere i was just holding on to what i had well you did a great job buddy and that gives you the opportunity to be here live on psr tv let's hear about friends family teammates sponsors who helped you get here buddy yeah uh gotta thank marty or uh for uh his sponsorship for um DWC and uh, Scott Granberry, GSR, for the sponsorship from DWC. 
um, and uh, JDR Graphics, JD Laird for painting the car. The uh, kid is really good at painting. Everything he's ever painted me looks great. And uh, give a shout out to Alan Cryer for uh, spotting for me tonight. He helped get me through a couple of those wrecks. I'd have probably been in a few more of them if uh, he wouldn't have been sitting there watching for me. There you go. That's Chad Coleman. He takes home third place here tonight. We'll pitch it back to Tim Terry, who's caught up with our fourth place finisher, Chris Moss. Tim? Chris Moss coming home in the fourth place position this evening. Chris, talk about your run to the fourth place position. Well, it was a long race. Uh, did a lot of work with the teammates early on. Uh, drafted back in the back with uh, Sean White and uh, William Halliburton. Kind of sat around dodged a couple wrecks went through a couple pit stops and then there just took advantage of one of the quick uh cautions that went up to the front and kind of hung around the top 10 from then on until uh that one wreck going into turn three uh, kind of put me to the back and then had to fight back uh back to fourth uh felt pretty good about that and a close call with a couple of laps left to go in the race just behind you the four and the eight car made contact what did you see out of the rear view mirror of those two cars with, with three laps to go going towards the inside wall? Well, I really wasn't looking in my mirror too much. I was more looking at the front because, uh, you know, I just wanted to race as close as I could to try and get a run. But uh, I was just glad the smoke was behind me and they didn't clip my fender. Now, 2011 still a young year. What's the goals going ahead for 2011? What's the plan? Where do we see Chris Moss racing? Well, uh, you'll definitely see me at the super speedways. Definitely have uh, have the uh, the setups and the crew chief and the team for that. Uh, we run FND Racing. We have a, a league on Friday nights that we run super speedways. We've been doing that a long time. Uh, probably got the best crew chief there, Sean White. Does excellent setups. So I just want to put a peg in there. Thanks, Sean White and uh, Billy for all the help and all the other FND team members that were racing today. Now you mentioned a couple of people there before we let you go we'll let you have the opportunity to thank anybody else that might be watching out there on psr tv or any final thoughts from the run here this evening chris the mic is all yours well first of all just uh thanks to everybody at least the, especially the drivers for uh, the uh, technical difficulties at the beginning you know uh the patience to hang around and uh, finally get in but uh i'm glad i racing got it all fixed up and uh, we actually got to run it and uh, again, again, F and D Racing, uh, it's a great place. Uh, all the guys uh, that we run with, uh, Monty Noy is uh, Dave Swindell. I know he had a great run there in the second split until something happened there at the end. But my hat's off to him for running a good race too. Remy Peralt and Dave Langman and Jim Orlando, Dylan Sharman, he helped there at the end too until uh, I think his engine blew up. There we go. There's our fourth place finisher, the number 19 of Chris Moss. Daryl Morley, what a show that we saw here this evening at the Daytona International Speedway. Super Speedway Racing at its finest. Indeed it was. It was some fantastic Super Speedway Racing. And I believe we'll see if we can hook up with Danny Hugel, who was our fifth place finisher here tonight. Danny Hugel, this is Daryl with, uh, with uh, PSR TV. You got me, buddy? Yes, sir. How you guys doing? Oh, we're doing pretty good. You know, sat here, watched a race, had some fun, although you kind of know that because you were out there, started deep in this field, bud. You found a way to work your way to the front, though. Yeah, it was definitely a roller coaster ride. Uh, followed Steve Gilbert up there pretty quick. He had a pretty fast car and was able to maintain my way up there by uh, avoiding all the big wrecks. You did exactly what you needed to do. Take us through those last few laps. It was pretty hectic. Yeah, I have not been good on the restarts up to that point, and a couple guys got in front of me, and then they try to get the high line going. I just try to stick it to the bottom. Then going into the turn three on the final lap, the car behind me got a pretty good run, clipped me in the bumper, was able to save it by hitting him a little bit, and then just kept held on tight. Sometimes you just kind of close your eyes and hope everything works out for the best. Before we let you go, Danny, let's hear about friends, teammates, sponsors. Uh, who helped you get to where you are, bud? 
Hey, I gotta thank the main sponsor, NASCOR.org. Go ahead and check them out, N-A-S-C-O-R.org. And we got some sponsorship available on my team. Go to h-hracing.com. And finally, I gotta thank iRacing and PSR TV for providing a great race. There you go. That's Danny Hugel, fifth place finisher here tonight. And Tim, all in all, a pretty darn good event. Indeed, you're right, Daryl. These guys put on a fantastic show. Of course, John Costa coming away with the win, 124 laps, but a hard-earned victory after having to come from the rear. A little bit of damage after a green flag pit stop. Thomas Lewandowski had a great run here this evening. A lot of great names. Finished with some bad luck. Landon Harrison finished four laps down. Pedro Souza was up at the front of the field near the end. He finished 10 laps down. Just a lot of strong competitors having some bad luck. But overall, a great show at Daytona International Speedway. We can't get out of here without finding out once again what happened in that very exciting second split. Chuck, real quick, top five for your second split, bud. Yeah, Darrell, once all the smoke and pixels had settled over here, it looks like uh, Rodney Kramer is our winner, followed by Rick Savage, Andrew Berger, Danny Hansen, and Joe Guys, rounding out our top five. Uh, this split had 10 cautions for 40 laps, and they managed 10 lead changes among them. And as you saw there, they finished it up in Grand Daytona style. Indeed, I did, and in Grand Daytona style, I will, I'd be willing to bet that all of the splits had some great racing action. That's going to wrap it up for the Daytona 500, presented by iRacing.com. Again, get hooked up with iRacing.com. You can get three months for the price of one. You buy one month, you get three months free, and you could find yourself involved in next year's Daytona 500. It's all available at iRacing.com, the most sophisticated and realistic simulation available on this planet. And that isn't just my words. That's the words from the people that know. That's the words from the physical world drivers. They've said nothing comes close to iRacing. On behalf of my buddy Tim Terry, PJ Losey, Matt Racing Kid Thomas, Chuck Johnson, Ian Bushing, Elka Hapla, Zach Stanko, and everybody over here at PSR TV. I'm Daryl Morley. Thanking you so much for tuning in and reminding you, keep a shiny side up and rubber side down, and always, always, always keep that hammer down. We'll see you next time right here on PSR TV.